Uh, hey, you guys. Uh, I know we usually have a cat walking toward the screen right now with Jaws music playing, um, but we kind of wanted to address you real quick before um, before we started the show. Uh, obviously, a lot of crazy shit's been going on. Um, Dave, Dave, why don't you take us away on this? Oof. I would I would have hoped for a little more preamble because I'm going to come in pretty hot here, and I'm sorry, guys, if this makes anybody uncomfortable, but um, I'm really uncomfortable with the way things are going in the country right now, and um, the things I've seen on social media the way that people are being treated for trying to express their opinions about legitimate issues, you know, getting tear gassed, cars running towards them, knocking people over, you know, all this stuff that I see, there's hundreds of examples of this stuff that is just way over the line and some of the craziest abuse of power I've ever seen. And that shit has to stop. And I know you guys can't do anything about that, but I hope you agree with me that that shit needs to stop because the people are not going to stop going out on the streets. And the more you militarize the response, the more people are going to be riled up to keep going out there. And I just think it's going to be a bad situation. And I mean, I have hope that people are going to keep going out there despite whatever they send at us. But like, I don't know, man, I just really hope something happens that isn't uh, tanks shooting at people in their cities and stuff like that. But I'm sure you guys have more positive things to say. It just seems very bleak right now. And I don't know when we're going to figure this out. I'm uh, sorry, I'm guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I I'm really proud to see our country, despite all this shit going on, um, that, you know, everybody's coming together and kind of unifying. And I think, you know, for me, this is something that has existed longer than ju just this week. Um, this has been something that has been important to me since I was born, pretty much. It's actually like even my bloodline. Um, so I just hope, you know, everybody can do their part. Don't think that you you can't do anything. Um, you absolutely can. And I remember a while back, several years ago, I used to think, oh, you know, I don't think this way. So, you know, but really at some point or another, you have to realize and tell yourself that there is a difference uh, and the way that we're being treated, the way that everything, and you just, you have to stand up and say something about it. Don't let injustices happen. Uh, and you know, just, I, I, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I promise you guys, uh, just keep fighting, hang in there. Love you guys to death, man. we we'll fight for you every single day. And yeah, just, just, just hang in there. We got, we're already seeing some changes, but there are more changes to come. So we're not done yet, but we will, uh, we will get through this. I promise. For sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to say anything that Dave and AJ haven't already talked about. Um, not really. So uh, I mean, it's just it's just a tough time, right? You don't know what to do during a time like this. You see PlayStation delaying their events and Upload VR delaying their events, and you look at look at without Pro and go, "What do I do? You know, like how do I show my support? Like, how do we go on blackout? What do we do?" And so every day, I woke up and just kind of took it day by day. I didn't make a public statement like we're shutting down the channel. I just had to sit back and go, you know, wake up every day and go, "Is today the day?" You know, do that. That, that I do something or is tomorrow the day and I just woke up every day just knowing it wasn't right um, but like we're a community and, and we get the best fucking community in the world and so I felt like by not publishing viewer takeover which I didn't do uh, in or, or not doing games cast live today um, I felt like I was stepping we'd be stepping away from the community and that's fucking the last thing we need to do right now so while it seems like you know oh here it's PSVR games cast live time uh, it seems like, oh, without parole, business as usual. I, I want you guys to know that that's fucking, it's anything but. You know, we are thinking about, you know, what's going on in the world. Uh, like, we're thinking about all of our brothers and sisters out there all the time. And, like, you all mean the world to us. Um, so, you know, we, the show's got to go on. Um, but, man, it, it's, I don't think anything's ever going to be the same, to be honest with you. So, I actually think that's going to be a good thing, though. I hope so, for sure. Uh, I think yeah. I think we need major, major change. Now, Brian, I think it's time do we, to cue the cat. <laughs> cue the cat. Let's do it. Because I want to say what is up to <laughs> Void Cat, Benderman, Strong Stonks. Please talk about Good Dog, Bad Dog. We certainly are. Mr. Roboto, Domora, <laughs> Domora, Domora, Woody the Bluebird, Robato. Benjamin, Benjamin, the Sacred Grove, Johnny Ripe the Stray Cat, Meow, Jason Ewing. <laughs> Um, or seek. I am or seek. Napa Bear, Darth Vader. Please don't choke, force choke me. Carlos, you can Carlos choke Ron. Me. Um, TMC, what is up, dude? Noah Person, does anyone know what the game in the middle picture is? You will find out. And I will tell
tell you. Maybe. More at 11. I'll find out. Go away, says, hey, guys. You hey. can stay. YP, <laughs> Caesar B, hello. Uh, we will be doing an Iron Man review at some point. Andrew Bailey, Andrew C., Tatiana M, hello. Roy Schwartz, my dude. Robbie B, the English Game Cat, Silent Hi. Evil. Hitting that fire always. Ezra the Game Cat, Dej the Pumpkin Patch Kid, old school gamer. Me too, man. Nike Alexander, Nike Alexander the Game hey, Cat. Nike. I don't know why I always say Nike. Perfect oh, Cat, hello. Uh, Brady the doesn't fire. appear. Hey, Keith the VR gamer, Donatello the scientist, Game Cat, Steve Irie, Wink Rogers, guys on Fistbump, too hard to get. Joe Mojo, Nihilus Brian. And uh, <laughs> thank you guys. So many of you joining in. Thank you guys so much for joining. There's still music playing. We're gonna fucking start this thing off in oh, just shit. a second. Oh shit, Taco, David Moore, you got more. <laughs> Phil, the Attack Cat, Scandal the Game Cat, Joshua Menard, Bro, Balloon Key, Polish Paul, your PVR, your PSVR dude, hello, Nick Mulo. Hey, yeah, I heard Polish Paul oh, starting a new Joshua. channel, and I heard it's supposed to be like quality and stuff. I think is Polish that, is, Paul does content. That, one that, day you will, one day you will actually watch one of his videos, and um, and we'll, you can answer the the lifelong question. I thought he was a new guy. Didn't he just start doing stuff? I haven't had a chance to check out his new channel. I heard it's supposed to be quality. I haven't found that out yet. This is PSVR Games Cast Live, where we film live every six p.m. Eastern, six p.m. Eastern, and we bring it to you live six p.m. Eastern because that's what live means. Guys, my name is Brian Paul from this channel right here, PSVR without parole. And to my damn it, damn it, where the fuck is Dave? He's not where he's supposed know. to be. So your name looks like Dave. So filling in for Dave this evening is AJ from the Underground PSVR. Let's fucking go. I'm pumped. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today, and I am excited. Um, yeah, lots going on, man. What's up? What's up, cats? Thank you guys for joining. What's up, Brian? Hey, where did Dave go? I don't know. He'll get here eventually. He will get. He will get here eventually. I think he had, he had to get a load off his chest, and now he has to go smoke a blunt or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. I don't ask. I don't ask. I don't tell. Um, Dave's doing something fucking probably totally illegal. Just kidding. I've no <sighs> idea. Uh, dude, let's get some housekeeping out of the way while we wait for Dave to get back. Um, also, thank you guys for for hanging out with us during that introduction. Uh, you know, a little, a little solemn, um, but man, like. Just had to get that off our chest. Um, Absolutely. Guys, dude, the Discord is blowing up. I love the Discord right now. There's so many cool cats in the Discord. I've been having like a lot of uh, personal conversations with people. I've been having a lot of public conversations with people over there. If you're going to send me a personal message, please do it on Discord because that's where I'm going to fucking see it. Um, so, so thank you to everybody hanging out over there. It's been awesome conversations nonstop. So click that link in the description. Join the Discord. Be part of the nonstop ever lasting gobstopper conversation i so there, i knew there was a really wonka reference in there somewhere uh, didn't stick the landing didn't stick the landing had a strong start though <laughs> uh so join the discord that that's what we wanted to say uh aj brian love the pixel rip shirt man i love it i love this pixel rip too yeah uh is it really plasticky it looks really plasticky i hate that feeling but it looks really good it's not that bad. Like, like it feels like it's gonna crumble or, or like too thick or something. No, it's a good. It's a nice material. It, it comes from uh, Threadless.com. So yes. you uh, can pretty never good wash stuff. it though. That it's you can wear it a thousand times, but you can never wash it. Yeah, That's it'll it'll thing. definitely in a couple of years it'll definitely be crumpled. But you know, it's all good. <laughs> all be, right. As long as I get the mileage out of it, Brian. I think we should begin the show the way we do each and every week. With a little game of should we or shouldn't we? We put six seconds up on the clock, the clock up on the counter, the way that Jeremy likes it. Boom. And it's our time, our time down here to tell you, the game cats, right up there, whether you should or should not be watching and or playing the things that we've been watching and or playing. Who wants to go? God, I love coffee. Go first. <laughs> Dave, why don't you go first? <laughs> oh, God, that would require me to have something already in mind, right? Well, then I will yes, go first did. because I yeah. have something in mind. If you can believe it, on your mark, oh, on my mark, get Des and go. Uh, so, dude, uh, I've been talking about Lock and Key on Netflix for a while because it's a great show. Um, based on the book, right? Based on the IDW graphic novels, uh, no. so uh, which I actually just picked up on Amazon because I love the show so much. Uh, and, dude, it's it's got this Harry Potter feel to it because it's, like, fan fantastical, but it's also more than that. It's, like, about family and, like, relationships and friends. It's I mean, it's obviously, I guess... Harry Potter's kind of about that stuff, too. Um, but it's just like this house of, that you find fucking crazy-ass keys in. They all do different things. Put one in the back of your neck, and you can get into somebody's head and, like, actually look at their memories and shit. Um, you open a door, you turn into a ghost. I mean, like, it's just bizarre and wonky and something that, like, should have been made into a movie in the 
like late eighties, early nineties. Like it just feels it has that kind of vibe to it. And, but it exists now on Netflix. Hulu passed on it. It was going to be a totally different show. Hulu passed on it. Netflix picked it up. It's so good. I'm sure you all have seen it already. I just finished. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a should we. It's like one of my favorite shows of the year. I got to check that out. Yeah, that, that that's it. It's like, man, thank God for coffee. <laughs> all right. Uh, AJ, you up next or Dave? You guys, you got some, uh, you got something ready. I think it's AJ's turn. All right. I got this. On your mark. Get Des. Go. All right, so I'm reaching back into my catalog of Saturday Night Live streams, which I do every, well, almost every Saturday, and I let the viewers choose what I play. And one of them was uh, was Mortal Blitz. Yeah. Now this, for those who don't know, is an arcade inspired, kind of like a rail shooter, um, except you're not constantly moving. You actually do get to teleport, like you know, from node to node. And there's like spots where you take cover. You physically take cover, like um, Time Crisis or so. And it's just a really cool action cyberpunk um, game. It actually looks really crisp on the pro. And it has this wonderful mechanic of not only like, you know, shooting uh, and a bunch of stuff, but there's like you, you change your arms to this whip and you once you weaken an enemy, you shoot them with this whip and you pull them, you rip it back or whatever, and they go flying. Everything goes slow motion. You shoot them in the head and it's like double combo and, and says like a bunch of cool shit. Um, but really, really mm. awesome arcade time crisis kind of shooter. Mm. Sorry, um, I, not I, complete, but my bad. I was talking in the chat instead of counting you down. <laughs> That's all my fault. <laughs> yeah, in chat, I feel bad. Intrepid, intrepid in the chat was like, man, we. I thought Mitch Hedberg was going to be your should we or shouldn't we? And I was like, oh fuck, I totally forgot about that. So. Yeah, I actually forgot to say whether it's a should we or shouldn't we. I think on sale, it goes on sale a lot, and on sale, it's a should we when you get it like ten dollars or less. Yeah. One of those games when it came out, we we're like, "This is amazing!" But now we have like way too much competition, and for twenty bucks, it's like no, not in the rail shooter, arcade shooter yeah. thing uh, genre. Um, I don't think it has a lot of. I actually think it's really good. Um, it's of course made by Skonek, and they never completed the game, like as they promised or whatever. But I think that's just due to it not making a lot of money at the time. But this game kicks ass, though. It's really good. Yeah, Agreed. I think they switched to arcades. Um, they're still making stuff in arcades. The Beat they Saber stuff. The Beat Saber and, machines. Yeah. And yeah, I think they have a Mortal Blitz arcade thing, too. I think yeah. so. Yeah. David. I got one. I came up with one. I'm so happy. On it's your mark. an oldie but goodie. Get this. Go. All right. So um, I've been having trouble sleeping lately, but Star Trek The Next Generation is a very good, soothing show. You can watch as few or as many as you want. You can fall asleep halfway through an episode and it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> and it's just got this like very comfortable structure and I, I love all the characters. And it's just like, I don't know, especially during times like this, the, their ideals and the way, you know, the, the way that they run their society and stuff. It just is like, man, you know, it's nice to think about uh, something like that. So, yeah, watch Star Trek The Next Generation. It's a very good show. If you've never heard of it, I'm sure <laughs> you may have at some point. There's a bald guy that everybody loves. He says, engage Patrick Stewart. and uh, make it Riker, so if, if I got in shape and I sh- cut my hair, everyone says I would look like Riker. Everybody <laughs> I'm telling you, because so, he's the if you guys don't know, he's like the cool, sexy one. So uh, how much more we got left? Are we five done? seconds. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And uh, it's a cool show. You should watch okay. it. <laughs> so, so Dave, two, two things. It's it's mm-hmm. funny that you brought up Star Trek Next Generation because I actually watched uh whatever the first pilot episode was, whatever, whatever at Farpoint uh, today. And they were talking about, yeah, yeah, Farpoint. And uh, they were talking about, you know, back in, you know, Q comes up and he starts talking about, you know, back in your day, you, you know, wars and this and whatever, pol- you know, politics, corruption and shit. And I was just watching going, Jesus, they were spot on like 20 years ago. They fucking nailed the <laughs> shit. Um, oh, yeah. It's a great, really well done show. Yeah. Ooh, we got tips. We yeah. got two donations. First one comes via Johnny Ripe off the Stray Cat. Thirteen ninety nine donation says, guys, thank you for that amazing intro. You're very welcome. Uh to all my American friends, please stay safe. You are all oh so very breathtaking. Gents, keep up the great work. Rar. Oh wait, can keep typing. I got nothing left. Thank you so much, Rye. Uh yeah, uh, I mean it's it's crazy here in this country, but I I'm a little scared it's gonna get crazy in other countries too. So everyone just well, stay yeah. safe and diligent. I mean, they're already starting to have major protests in, you know, all over the place. Yeah. We got, well, we got two more tips to take care of, don't we? Yeah. Brian, yeah. Yeah. Brian, take the second one. All right. 
<laughs> All right, that one comes to us from Joe Grover, the effing game cat, with a whopping fifty oh. fucking dollar donation. Thank you, sir. He says, "For the happiness all three of you bring to so many, we love you all, and we love you right back." Red Rover, Red Rover, send Joe Grover, right <laughs> over. For sure. Thank you so much, dude. That means a lot. And who's got the last one? Dave. No, I mean, read it. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. God, he won't shut up. Okay. Donatella, the scientist game cat with a $10 donation. Thank you, sir. Love to support, love and support to all. You are never alone. If life is getting you down, reach out. This community and many others are with you. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, guys, yes. we have a lot of news to cover. Uh, including some, you know, latest on PlayStation Five, some it, new games. Is it time for announced. some news? It is time for a some news. Bit. We got a new game That's this week, news. and there's also <laughs> a huge, news. huge a sale. Average size news that we yeah. are going to go in depth as always and talk about every single game on this Days of Play sale, which started yesterday. And man, did they get it right with this one! But first. Yes. We are going to real quick touch base. So today, Brian, hey. Dave, Game Cats, was actually we were supposed to be doing a special today um, <laughs> about the PlayStation Five showcase. Um, there have been rumors about expected PSVR titles. Plus, we just want to see the thing run. Like we just want to see some gameplay and a bunch of other stuff. Um, however, Sony has decided to reschedule. There's no new date yet. They did say they're going to do it. As soon as possible, but but basically uh, they posted on Twitter, quote, we have decided to postpone the PlayStation 5 event scheduled for June 4th. While we understand gamers worldwide are excited to see PS5 games, we do not feel that right now is a time for celebration. And for now, we want to stand back and allow more important voices to be heard. Brian. Can you guys hear the construction going on? A little bit. All right. Not really. Is it, okay. It's as long as it's not like super distracting. They, they told me two days ago, they're like, don't worry, it's going to be done by Thursday. And I was like, nope, obviously not. Um, <laughs> well, it's still Thursday. Shitty earbuds, so so I can't technically, really there's still time. Yeah. Uh, so so what, what's what's the deal here? There, we don't we don't have a date, uh, a rescheduled date, uh, which right. sucks. You know, we, we, we understand why they rescheduled. You know, every, right. everyone's rescheduling. We totally understand. Um, obviously the right move to make right now yeah absolutely we want, we want people focused on what they should be focused on and then when it's time to rejoice and, and you know get excited about next gen then we can rejoice and get excited about next gen um, yeah and yeah. uh and but but man that is not going to stop us from doing what we always do oh no speculating speculating on what <laughs> oh, we could God. have seen today <laughs> this already we'll, we'll do this quick we'll do this quick but we do i am interested chat as well let us know what you guys expect to see what you hope to see um but yeah let's let's speculate just a little bit if you guys don't oh, if you guys don't mind about. taking the this reins we, for just a second here yeah sure. i'll be right back isn't this what we talked about in that abandoned viewer takeover episode yes yeah. we yeah. did have a, I know we've had this exact conversation before we okay. have a viewer takeover that's uh we'll, we'll be cutting it up and putting it on Patreon. Oh, look at that picture of Tornado. Ooh, Tornado Brian is the most Brian. adorable thing ever. I can't wait till he gets that cat. Um, so I have two bold predictions uh, for this thing. Obviously, some of it can change, but essentially a lot of developers um, have been planning to showcase stuff for the PS5 for a while now. And, you know, first we had, you know, COVID. Now we have other things going on, and um, I think it was, like I said, uh, a, a right idea to postpone it, let things settle down, make sure we get the change that we want to see first, and then it'll be really, really a time to celebrate. And, well, um, I, think, I think it's more about waiting for the active protests and shit to die down, because we're not going to have, not to belabor the point too much, but we're not going to have the change we need to see before this showcase, I guarantee you that. Well, so, we'll, yeah. we'll see. We're already starting to see some things happen so as long as it completely goes but um they rested a few people on another side but anyways my two predictions guys two i believe we're gonna see gran turismo sport vr or gran turismo 7 and i think we're gonna see astrobot 2. Pretty surprise solid. surprise what about you guys um so i think one that recently was in the news because it sort of got listed for a, a PSVR release, but then got pulled real quick is Prey. 
I don't know if you guys remember Prey. Um, it was a pretty well received, uh, pretty you know flashy looking flat screen game, and uh, they had added some VR modes and sort of hinted that they wanted to do more with it. But I think that's something that couldn't get done on the PS4 the way they want to do it. So I could see that being like a PS5 launch title in PSVR if they've already been working on it. You know, they have the some part of the engine <laughs> built in VR. Well, so. well, David, I have some interesting news for you a little bit you later. Have news about my speculation. Damn. Yes, I do have some news about All your right, speculation. Well, I guess we'll get into that later. Uh, so um, I guess my prediction is a little more vague uh, than than that, th without specific games being mentioned. Uh, I think the thing that the thing that I'm seeing for <laughs> God, I'm so sick of being wrong. Um, during you know during the the PlayStation Four, there's a huge PlayStation Four event. It must have been E3 or something. And I remember it was like just after PlayStation VR launched, and we're all super optimistic about the thing, thinking that you know it can really handle like a whole lot of AAA games, no problems. And I remember seeing like these big you know obviously the the big auditoriums that they had the uh, the events in, just with wraparound screens and just showing like Horizon and this game and that game, all these AAA titles, God of War and the next Uncharted game. And and I was just always waiting you know, stupidly and optimistically for them to say, and all the games you just saw will also be playable in PlayStation VR, which is like, so like in retrospect, I'm like, Brian, that was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> but with the power of the PlayStation it's five, cool. right. Okay. With, the, with the power of the PlayStation five, I feel like there could be a whole segment of this game reveal where they say in the last six games you just saw are also playable in PlayStation VR. Like, I feel like that might actually come to fruition now. And again, I'm ready to be wrong. I'm ready to be wrong. But I, I'd rather be optimistic and wrong than, like, just fucking down in the dumps. Like, we ain't going to see no PSVR stuff. Because um, I really hope we do. I need, I need that in my life, like, as soon as possible. Old School Gamer says Dreams VR patch. That'd be a cool one. Ezra the GameCat says Resident Evil 8. We know there's supposed to be a Capcom announcement right after it was supposed June to be right after 10 or something i'm assuming everything gets um, pushed forward until we get a new date for the playstation 5 <sighs> games event because i feel like I they were waiting i was really hoping to to get some you know sego has been teasing this uh big industry shaking shake up the industry announcement oh, so disappointing uh with uh with something on uh, Famitsu and it's like their own they... version of fucking cloud gaming. It's like called fog gaming or something. I was like, hey, you've got to be kidding me. I was like, this is no one cares. Well, I will say, though, they all they also did release the announcement or have the announcement for the Game Gear Mini, Brian and Dave and Game Cats. Game it's Gear too damn Mini. small. It's, it's tiny. Like, it has a one inch like screen. Chain, well, like that not. thing was hard to look at when I had a full game gear. <laughs> yeah. Uh that's so it'll be interesting. That being said, I'm I want one. I'm gonna have to buy one. Could've I have gone somewhere in between and made it like not as big as a game gear, but not like a fucking keychain. <laughs> right. I don't know, man. There's right. a good middle ground. We there. could make it thin, like a like a switch, you know, and and, and still have it be just smaller than a, a Game Gear because that thing was bulky. Yeah. And so, if you want to make it slick it's and really cool, heavy, yeah. it could it could very well be done. I want to say that um, I just saw that Joe Mojo in the chat said, "Joe Mojo, yes, where where was it? I just lost him." This is he said, "Please Fallout 4. And I, and I want to tell you guys, um, I am sending AJ and Dave <laughs> Nuka Cola Quantums in the mail because and they're five years old. Okay, so like Why are you doing we, we all might die because I've been saying since the Midnight Games cast that <laughs> when they announce when they announce Fallout 4 VR or any Fallout VR game, it's time to break those fuckers up because I've got a case of Nuka-Cola Quantum stashed under my bed, probably expired years ago. And I'm gonna, yeah, and I don't I'm gonna, know. I don't know how I feel about this. We, we can, we can toast. You don't have to drink. I'll, t I'll I might drink it. replace it, it with a, a liquid of the same color and just act like I'm Why don't you just drink. mix it with like a ton of vodka? The vodka will kill off any of the bacteria and you'll be fine. <laughs> Right, you'll be okay. drunk, but at least you'll be alive. There you Fair go. Point. Fair point. All right, uh, let's move on. <laughs> um, all right, so Desolatium, Desolatium. I, I, you know, I, you keep Desolation. Desolation. <laughs> when AJ, you, I, I feel like you should know how to pronounce this because it sounds like a metal band. <laughs> <laughs> Winner 100%. of the most innovative game of 2018 from PlayStation Talents 2018, nominated. For best game of the year from PlayStation Talents 2018, nominated the challenge best v game VR from Samsung Dev Spain, winner the best sound from Game Gameopolis 2019. No one's ever heard of Gameopolis. They have 
They have opened their official Kickstarter. Congratulations, guys. And even better, I have some wonderful news. They have already hit their pledge in just 24 hours. There's still 21 days to go with 239 backers currently. They hit their pledge of eleven thousand two hundred and sixteen dollars. I think I think we could toss them a little bit more cash, huh? I think we could toss them a little bit more cash. That but seem like enough money. Eleven thousand bucks. Yeah. But basically, it probably says like the, uh, probably like the Shenmue uh, Kickstarter. They probably had money, you know, and yeah. then they just needed a little extra. Yeah. Um, um, no, a person was asking about what's the picture in the middle of the thumbnail uh, on this game's cast. That is. would be this game. And, and I, you've been calling it Desolation uh, off off screen, and and I kind of like that. But the one person I've heard talk about it on a stream stream. Actually, no, I've been saying Desolatium because it was like desolate. Okay. Well, see, I'm kind of I'm kind of liking Desolation because kind of like that. Desolation. I think, it, I, think it, I think it rolls. Yeah, but but, the but also the player. one person I've heard call it anything ever besides us was Desolatium, <laughs> and I was like that. I kind of like that too, but it sounds yeah, like a different seen, language. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Desolatio. So again, my only concern for this thing was that the the early access or whatever they've got the demo, whatever it is on Steam right now, is basically 360 degree photographs, and it's like a five minute experience. So I'm hoping that that was like, hey, this is something we're trying. You know, we want to give you an idea of what the final product will be like. I'm hoping it's going to be actually VR and not just still photographs, uh, and obviously a much much longer game. So I think there's, yeah. they're just saying, hey, we're get an idea of what we're trying to do with the simple stuff. Uh, and, but we'll see if it, it's actually more than that. Fingers crossed. I hope so. I love scary shit. I do. Yeah. Um, it, it is a, uh, you know, at, at right now they just have a 15, 20 minute demo and it has a good ending and a bad ending. Um, but essentially you will be, uh, it says immerse yourself in distressing psychological thriller uh, in a distressing psychological thriller in which you'll have to solve a, a series of murders occurred around the end of 2019 in an abandoned town of Spain. But this is just the beginning of your story. Gather clues, solve intricate puzzles, and be ready to face cults of and prime evil gods. Interesting. And journey thousands of years into the past to find the source of that evil. It is a, uh, a Lovecraft so it's so inspired. It's, so it's Eternal Darkness. <laughs> it is cool. a Lovecraft inspired uh, thing, adventure, I should say, thriller. So I mean, the art art style looks really cool. Yeah, for um, sure. be be interesting to see. Definitely, the previews have it looking like some kind of like what what, what do you call those uh, those old PC games that had like actual like not mocap but kind of like the way Mortal Kombat looks. Like, like full where motion it's like video full motion video but yeah. it, like it integrated into the gameplay and stuff or like into the oh i mean like that... like i guess like uh fan, i'm god i'm thinking phantasmagoria Fanta but, yeah that's what like, i was actually but thinking. Like the seventh guest and stuff had like like moving from room to room was like full motion video and shit like that right um, oh wait what's the what what's the uh is it night trap night trap i mean that's just like video cameras it, it, like it looks it looks like night trap to me is what it looks like just you know newer yeah i don't think you're selling anybody on this game right now <laughs> i don't think that's well i don't have to because they already hit their kickstarter however you can go to I... kickstarter.com slash project slash super have slash you been over there I, i'm on it right now is it what are the rewards so like are there because I, I saw a box a ps4 box with desolation on it um is, i wonder if that's one of the rewards for backing the project <sighs> Um, like a, like a physical copy. That's you, that's a lot of what uh, Kickstarter is all about. Is you donate enough money and you art, get a physical. Okay, copy. rewards. You get an art book. You get a poster. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that poster looks crazy. You get a t-shirt. Yeah. T-shirt looks cool too. You get you do get a physical edition, PC or PS4. Um, short campaign based on D100 system. I like it's like an RPG adventure. I like that the the most expensive tier is six hundred euro or more. I was like that's that's insane. Like, what if the game sucks? Can you imagine being like, yeah, I I, I donated six hundred dollars to this cause, and the game didn't turn out good. Be like, and that's you probably got enough money laying around that you don't care that much in the end. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe that's if the you case. Six hundred bucks on a Kickstarter. That's like buying a sixty dollar game and being like, eh, I didn't like it that much. There you go. There you go, Brian. Unicorn, unicorn, I, I girl, girl. That. 
There's one in every I crowd. I love Night Trap. There's one in every Sounds crowd. Sounds good in VR. Yeah, just yep. like how there's one in every crowd that likes Lost Planet too, Brian. Okay, so huge? no one saw Viewer Takeover because I didn't air it. So no one has any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to reference stuff that you guys have no clue about all night. Yeah, yeah it's actually, cool. I've, I've actually been making the same jokes I made two days ago. <laughs> Are you <laughs> No really? one has any idea. And they're still not funny. Yeah. Uh, Phantasmagoria is the fucking shit, man. That was like basically Mortal Kombat. It was like, here's your static backgrounds yeah, with like digitized yeah, yeah. characters walking around. I've actually got that on the Saturn. It only came out on the Saturn in Japan. So it's very, very strange to, to be playing that on a console. It's like four discs. It's craziness. All right. So congratulations, guys. Um, definitely be checking this out. Uh, I'm going to pledge uh, here pretty soon. It, it happened. It all happened so fast. But I'm definitely going to pledge support this game. Um, just check it out. Maybe try and get a t-shirt or something. I'll look at the different reward packages, like you said, but you know, always nice to see new horror games, uh, on PSVR or VR in general, because they are scary as hell. It did say, and by the way, I looked at the FAQ and they said they're looking into PlayStation five and Xbox series one support, Xbox one series X support. I was get that wrong. Um, and they're, uh, Nobody knows. and they're saying that since they're a PlayStation partner, they're pretty sure like it won't be an issue getting it over to uh, PlayStation five. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So this could Good be stuff. this could be an early PlayStation Five title. Who knows? Balloon Key says Lost Planet Two is pretty good, actually. To be honest, damn right, Balloon Key. Well, he had I to qualify that three times. Pretty good, <laughs> actually. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know what people say, but it's pretty good, actually. To be honest. All right. So there is a brand new game announced for PlayStation VR. Uh, it comes via Emerge Worlds, and it's called Dance collider and it says at the dawn of the 24th century transhumans are nurtured by a super ai known as uriel you know i don't know if there's a story in this game but i will say the gameplay looks like similar to air tone it's one of these it's it's a rhythm game similar to like the gameplay of air tone and beat beats fever and i'm excited for this because I think it looks gameplay wise a lot like one of these. Yeah. So I'm I'm wa- so I'm watching the trailer and uh, yep. so there's like opponents, right? So like they're they're throwing basically throwing stuff at you almost like Beat Saber style, and you're like kind of knocking them back. Uh, I didn't, destroying I didn't actually pay attention to that. Okay, it looks like you're destroying them, and and this is kind of like what people have talked about when it comes to Beat Saber like multiplayer. This is what they want from Beat Saber multiplayer is like actually another person facing you with lightsabers, and you're like hitting blocks back and forth at like higher and higher speeds and shit. Um, and and so uh, and so that's kind of like the impression I got from that is like somebody was listening and went, "This is cool." Um, although I don't think that's exact. I don't think that's what it is. It seems like it's probably a one player game with different opponents that you just destroy the the beats but you know I, I, it still looks kind of like what people were asking for Very got that. when you were talking about that i was thinking about i mean it sort of looks like it could be if that was the concept like a spark version of a rhythm game like you're right. just hitting it back and forth at each other you know to the beat but i don't i don't see that in this gameplay that i'm looking at here it just looks like i love how the art style looks like sprint vector does anyone else feel like it, it yeah, looks it like does. a little bit like sprint vector yeah yeah, when it's I was colorful, looking up stuff for the uh, f- for the thumbnail, that the, the the character designs definitely like the bright, vibrant neon colors and shit. Absolutely looks like that. This gameplay I'm, though works really well in VR, where you're poking like the the little rhythm dots and stuff, and then like you have to trace certain lines and stuff. Um, I really, really liked uh, the gameplay of games like this. Do we have any kind of? I uh, like the, uh, I like the way that your avatar is like represented up in the kind of in front of you in this giant holographic way. You see what I'm talking about? I don't know if that's in the trailer you're looking at. Um, I'm actually I'm actually watching now because am I am I being confused? Is are the beats not coming from opponents? No, no it looks look, like look, the beats that's, come that's from behind reference. opponents or something. The, the guy, the big guy in front of you is your hands. I think when they're moving, it looks like it's matching their their hand movements. Oh, right? I thought that was an opponent. Oh. No, it I think to that, me, like, it was a representation of your body doing what you're doing in the game. I could help look at it again, but that's what it that like is to me. so interesting. Now, now I'm totally confused because it looks like yeah. it looks like there's a character select screen. And I don't know if you're selecting your character or if it's like a fighting game who you're selecting who you're you know fighting against. I thought it was like a fighting like a like a dance off kind of fighting thing. Yeah, no, it, it does seem like 
characters' movements are choreographed. Maybe if they're not mirroring yours, they might be like how you're supposed to to move to play it. There are other rhythm games that do that, where they show you kind of a figure of how you ought to be moving. I think the, the trailer I'm looking at. Are you are you looking at the same trailer that we're watching? Because I don't think so. This it, is yeah, Stiletti this gameplay core. This Lu Wen level, know. she's saying you are no match for me. So it is like a. It's like each song is like a different character. Yeah, this one, like yeah, movements, them. these movements aren't for matching sure. up at all. So it does look like two separate characters. Like one. Yep. So that. I mean, pretty Maybe cool to kind of like stuff. give a fighting game aspect to a to a rhythm game like this. <laughs> What's up, Jeremy? Yo, Jeremy. Jeremy King? The Sofa King? The Sofa King. The Sofa King's in the house. What's up? All the way across the um, city. So, yeah, I'm, I am I don't... Were you about to ask, do we have a window on this? Like a yeah, release window? I, I was going to ask that. I know they just added some... It looks like they just added a hardcore mode, uh, a hardcore update. Um, let's see if it has... It doesn't say... It just says coming to PSVR soon. Uh, two days ago. That's it. Um, and they've got characters, dance collider characters, repping England, Japan, France, unknown, unknown, USA, Russia, China, and Brazil. Nice. Um, it's like it's like Street Fighter, Sprint Vector, and Airtone mixed. It's so weird, hmm. and I love it. Awesome. I love intriguing. it. And I'm excited. The, uh, the Steam Store page. Uh, it's uh, it's all the reviews are very positive, and it's a fifteen dollar game. Uh, so this could be a kind of a cheap alternative to something like Beat Saber. Yeah. And like I said, I wouldn't sleep on this. The uh, These kind of games are fun. Airtone. I'm going to sleep on it until Beats it comes out. <laughs> and then uh, we play. have, before we move on, we have a $5 donation from Genetic Blasphemy um, with no comment, but thank you so much. And then uh, Nihilist Ryan, the game feline, with the $5 donation, says, anyone ever play Bad Mojo on PC? Cockroach Adventure slash Puzzler, Desolatium reminds me of that. Bad Mojo. It sounds familiar. Yeah, Cockroach right Adventure, now. like Joe's Apartment, the video game. Or <laughs> I'm actually looking this underrated up, so. movie. No, not really. But Pulse I don't think I ever Entertainment, saw it. Pulse Interactive. Yeah. One of MTV's better movies. Wait, really? Uh, I heard, looks... Stand by Beeps and Butthead to America. Oh, I think yeah. that's actually a good movie. Fantastic to movie. Whoa, Bad Mojo looks. A lot like gnarly, this right? Yeah, craziness. Um, no one can see what I'm seeing, so I guess I should probably should the name it. sounds familiar, but it doesn't look familiar. Uh, Voicast says, Whatever happened to Jeremy Plays? Uh, Jeremy Plays, uh, is I don't know, whatever happened to Jeremy Plays? We uh, we play start, something, Jeremy. Yeah, damn it. I came up with an idea for a game that you should <laughs> make him play. We talked about it even, and I was like, God, oh, this is a really good idea. Make Jeremy play this, but I now I can't think of it. It'll come to me. <laughs> Good point. Good, good. We'll, we'll get Jeremy well. back on his screen. I might have been on that call, that conference call. May, maybe. Oh, yeah, that might have been our, one of our three ways. <laughs> well, which we do film all of, um, just in case. Uh, I, I need blackmail materials all the time. Patreon.com slash without pro game. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, no, uh, basically the reason that Jeremy stopped doing Let's Plays was because it was interfe- his Monday nights, it was interfering with our recording schedule for Why We Love when he took over Dez's slot. Um, and now we... I mean, we don't have a schedule for why we love anymore. Sometimes we're filming super late night Sunday and I'm like immediately editing and rendering and uploading to try to get it up for the 4 a.m. Uh, time on Monday. So uh, shit's crazy. Shit's absolutely crazy. But yeah, we, we should get Jeremy back on a streaming schedule. It'd be great. Without Pearl needs more content. That's what I always say. I was like, we don't have enough fucking shows on this channel. Yeah. And before we move on, we want to get a shout out to Old School Gamer with the uh, 199... Quid donation saying my ultimate would be Alien Isolation in VR. Oh. Thank you very much for the tip, and I agree with you. Alien Isolation is one of like maybe five games I desperately want in VR. One of the scariest games I've ever played. It goes it goes all the way back to my childhood of giving me nightmares, and yeah, uh, that, Did that Alien that, give you nightmares. Yeah, the, the original movie. Uh, oh yeah, yes. oh the original. Yeah, absolutely. the The freaking game like gave me nightmares again. I mean, I. I actually never finished it because my heart basically lodged up into my throat and I almost died. Um, yeah, like I had, I got the flamethrower in Alien Isolation and I was like, fuck yeah, like let's do this. And, uh, you know, get away from her, you bitch. <laughs> and and uh, the, the, the alien pops out and I hit it with the flamethrower and I was like, 
yeah, like it burned. It's all and it like runs away. And I was like, hell yeah. Like at least now I've got a way to like defend myself. But then I realized I couldn't kill it. And I was like, well, that kind of sucks. So like I'm walking down the hallway in, in the ship and then the alien just busts down through the oh, ceiling and smoke Incredible. is everywhere. And it's just like flipping out and it's all like, and, and like, I just immediately ducked behind like a desk and I was just like, my heart, man, my heart hurt so bad. And yeah, second, second jump scare after that too. I just, I was like, I, I fuck this. I've had enough of this man. Um, <laughs> I think the fact though, that you can't kill it is like the most true to the original alien movie out of any of the video yeah, games that true. they've made. Cause in the other video games, you're just like, shooting gallerying these fucking xenomorphs you're just like ah that one's dead that one's dead <laughs> um especially the side scrolling ones was just like buh, 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 and then they oh scared. yeah but uh this kind of does a great job of recreating that like the only way to get rid of it is to blow it out the fucking airlock like you can't kill it you yeah. have to shoot it into space that's it that would be uh that great. would be a really good uh vr conversion we've also oh, got yeah. a back, uh, brian Oh, Joe Grover, the effing game cat, Red Rover, Red Rover, says uh, $5 donation, AJ's drunk play on Dave's channel, was the effing shit. Super funny it was and hilarious. amazing. It's oh a God, Dave's Station it. Prevents. Pre Dave's prevents. Station Presents. <laughs> I'm still prevent drunk, anything. apparently. Dave's Station Prevents, AJ from ever streaming on my I don't, I don't think I've ever gotten so shit-faced and did a live stream before. This is, if you if you want to see that, go to Dave Station's channel at Dave Station VR. Yeah, it's my latest and, video ever right now although i might replace that very soon with a good yeah. dog bad dog so oh, if you God. guys are interested um can't wait to talk about that probably 15 minutes long and but I yeah give up. i was hammered i was i was so so hammered when i did that and it was a lot of fun thank you dave for hosting me um it was a blast yeah, man. thank you joe for the donation and for hanging out too it was fun hey, we got one more hotel r and r kicks ass by the way good morning Johnny Ripop, the game cat, stray cat, sorry. All I ask for is a good apocalypse title in VR. It's never going to happen. Mm. Probably not going to happen, buddy. Sorry about that. But thank you for the donation. We'll see what we can do about it. Um, It'll happen eventually. And then the poor, final one. Poor boxing. AJ, apocalypse. Brian, you want to take that? <laughs> sure. AJ? Robbie B, the English game cat with a two donation, says we can start a petition for isolation. What? That's right. We should. We absolutely we'll should. Cool. Maybe Sega gets off their fucking ass and starts making yeah. some VR games. Let's do it, man. Let's absolutely do it. All right. Wait. Now I don't know what, right. what I want more. No, no, no. I was going <laughs> to say, we need Crazy Taxi. But no, I'll take Alien Isolation first and foremost. And yeah. Then, and then yeah. Crazy Taxi. I agree. And then House of the Dead. And then Pegasus right. Dragoon. And then... So, guys... <laughs> And then, oh, I know where we are next. <laughs> so, going back to what Dave was referencing for his prediction, Dave, did you? Is this why you predicted that? I saw an article uh, like a week or two ago that said it had been sort of put up on a page for a minute and then pulled, so sort of leaked. And I, I had heard in the past something similar that there was like plans to get it into VR. But well, why don't we actually <laughs> reveal what we're talking about? Prey VR showed up on. A UK listing, and now, this is a game where yeah. you go to church, right, and use the move controllers to put your hands yeah, together. It is at the, pray, at the, right? It is move supported. Virtual reality praying. You lose tracking. I mean, you start praying, and then one hand starts going like drifting off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, pray the uh, the sci-fi thriller kind of uh, action game. Um, pretty good game too, and I never actually got to finish it because VR happened and. Um, but it is like an action first person shooter by published by Bethesda Softworks. So we know we had the Moon Crash or Typhon Hunter, I should say, DLC. Um, and so this is interesting, man. This is interesting. It's really interesting because this could go two ways, right? The first, the first way, and I and I hate saying the more likely way, but like at this point in PlayStation VR's lifespan, I feel like it's so possible that this could just be a repackaged version of Prey. With all the DLC on one disc, and they call it Prey VR because it's got all this VR extra content, and so they just they're just calling it Prey VR, and that would be the worst thing ever, even if it's the most likely thing, right? I don't think that's the most likely thing by any means because Prey didn't even make that big of a splash when it came out. At this point, it's basically a bargain bin game. You can get it very cheap, even though it's very good. It's not like 
at the top of the charts. Nobody's talking about it anymore. What I think is that if they tried to do that, it would make no business sense because no one's out there trying to buy the same exact version of Prey that already exists. Nobody wants that. Nobody's like, oh, cool, they put it on a disc with the stuff that's already available as DLC if I had the disc before. like It is Bethesda, just, though. I, and Bethesda I, has... Bethesda made Cyberpilot. I mean, you know, they it seems like something they would do and just release this without mentioning it a whole lot. I mean, it would be amazing to to be able to port this whole thing to yeah. to this this game is like like the persistence, um, you know, but to have that Bethesda triple A quality money behind it, oh this um, would be amazing. What's the involvement? Because I thought Arcane. This is Arcane. They, like, Arcane developed it, but Bethesda published it. Oh, okay. Right. Um, but Bethesda has this knack for for you know developing, helping develop these uh, these VR ports of games. I mean, they've done it. What Skyrim, Doom VFR, Fallout Four for PC. Damn, um, I was just about to break open the Nuka Cola Quantum. I was like, they announced it. <laughs> Fucking we're here. I'm doing it. Um, that's four off the top of my head that I can think and. Uh, you know, Doom and and Skyrim, I know, were pretty successful. Um, there was uh, some Steam. This is just even just on the PC side. Steam store leaked like like Skyrim and Doom VFR being like over two hundred thousand copies sold. Um, yeah. And this was like years ago. Yeah, you would um, think you would think that it's it's time, right? Like Bethesda has been a little quiet uh, on the VR front. I don't think Cyberpilot was you know a huge project for them. Uh, you know, obviously, again, it was Arcane. No, that wasn't Arcane. Who the fuck was that? Uh, Machine Games? I always... Too many Bethesda think, Studios. Yeah, I think it's Machine Games or Machine Drum Games or something. I don't know. Machine Games? Yeah, I don't know. But, like, it's... it's you are in a machine for all the time, so it makes sense. There's that. <laughs> but it's it's time, right? It's time because they, they, they seem to be doing some VR stuff pretty consistently, and then they sort of just dropped off the face of the planet. Um, in this, you know... So I was playing Devil's Advocate before saying this, you know... I want to keep everyone's expectations in check and say it might just be a repackaged version. Um, man, if this is the full campaign of Prey, sign me up. Like, this is... I started playing this game. I got it like an hour or two in. I was having a blast. And then, you know, as AJ said, VR happened. Uh, and, like, everything yeah. got pushed to the yeah. side. I, I still haven't finished Horizon. I'm, like, 10 hour, 12 hours, 16 hours into Horizon or something. Never finished it. Um, well, now I'm afraid to play some of these games because I don't know if they're going to get VR support. So it's like instead of going through my backlog, it's like, ugh, do I what do I do? Like, do I wait and see if it gets VR? Because I want that if I, you know, I want that first surprise to be yeah. in VR. Fucking wait, man. Wait. I don't care if I have to wait 10 years to fucking play Prey. <laughs> We're going to play it eventually in <laughs> VR. Eventually. Eventually all games will be in VR. Not every game, just all games. Yeah. You know what I'm saying there? Right. This would be kick ass though. This and Soma, ah, two two games I'd love to see. And this, yeah. you know, Dave's right. This isn't like a this wasn't like a super high selling game, but it, it does have like a big cult following around it. I mean, people that you know played it and stuff really liked it. Yeah, I mean, the original series was pretty, fairly popular, right? Wasn't there a couple? Were there a couple of Prey games before this kind of reboot? Uh, uh, I don't, I don't I know. I, I feel like this was the. Uh, it's either this one or Soma. I get them. I get this and Soma confused. But well, one of them is like game franchises. Soma is an extension of the uh, Amnesia games. I think. Yeah, is or that what they were called? Amnesia, Amnesia and okay. then there was Soma later, and then I think they did some other one. Was um, this inspired Prey by definitely. System Shock? System Shock. It's more like System Shock. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm a huge System Shock Two fan. That's like one of my favorite games of all time. They're trying to kill me. Uh, I'm scrolling through here. It doesn't. Oh, there was a canceled sequel. Prey Two was canceled. It seems like. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I don't. I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> but this would be amazing. This would be. You know, give me a, any game. Any game from from a, a big AAA studio that it has a full length campaign. You know, here we are four years in the PlayStation VR's lifespan, and these are still things we're asking for. Um, it's nice to get things like Saints and Sinners, but we don't get things like that very often. Um, so for anyone who didn't play this or anyone who looks, is looking to play it again, this would be an awesome, awesome way to do that. So let's hope, fingers crossed, and hopefully, uh, you know, that, that leak happened. Uh, so hopefully... The timing of the leak is what makes me... Like, you know, first thought would be like, ah, eh, it was just a mistake. Yeah. But the timing of it to happen right before um the ps5 show it's like oh that would just be cool that's true that would make sense i mean the, the leak yeah. did show a playstation 4 box so they obviously the listing they leaked was a playstation 4 listing 
It was a generic box, mm. like a black box with like white letters that yeah. said "Pray well, VR." I mean, that, that might be because they haven't released any kind of template for what a PS5 box even looks like, and that would also like spoil. That would spoil everything yeah. if that leaked. Would right. know way more. Than Ooh, that is something. Right? Yeah, I look forward to seeing uh, what the boxes look like. Somebody did this cool concept of like um, that sort of. You remember those like cardboard and plastic cases that they used to have uh, for like some DVDs and stuff. Um, yeah. I know that they seem kind of flimsy, but the way that they look, the design I saw online looked pretty cool. Um, so I'm curious. I mean, who knows? There's already a lot of plastic out there. I was going to say, I feel like plastic. they keep stripping away plastic from boxes every single time. And so I feel yeah. like less packaging material is more likely than more packaging material. Probably so, yeah. But we'll see. All right, you guys, pray VR. Keep your fingers crossed, and hopefully we'll hear something soon. Keep in mind that Fallout 4 on PlayStation VR got leaked like years ago, and it never happened. So who the fuck <laughs> Yeah. This could be the exact same thing. Yeah. All right. Well, we got a big, big game that just had some news resurface. But first, we want to talk about uh, Space Channel 5 getting its first DLC. Um, this comes from Max Ledroom PSVR on Twitter. My dude, shout out to you. Um, and he says, Ultima Hora. Uh, he says, we have, uh, quote, we have, we already have the arrival date of Hatsune Miku to the game Space Channel 5, kind of fucking newsflash of PlayStation VR. The, the study title by Grounding Inc., you will receive your first DLC called Space 39 Miku Pack next July 27th, which also includes new costumes and skins. Does it cost money? This was translated, so I, I apologize for right. that. Also, we could have just taken it from the grounding uh, announcement. Yeah. I don't know why we took it from a, a channel that, does, that doesn't uh, have English as. This is my English. Twitter buddy. Got to give him some love. He's my Twitter dude. Oh, I see. Hey. I see. I see. Patting people on the back. Fucking yeah, all. Cost money. So this is the question, <laughs> Dave. This is the question. Many times, my question. This is the Keep question. It. We money. paid. We paid forty dollars for Space Channel Five yes. VR. Kind of funky newsflash. And and we said, hey, this would be a great fifteen dollar game, and then charge us for DLC. But it was forty dollars with the promise of more to come. We don't know if this is going to cost money. If this costs money, it better not cost money. Right? I, I am I am abandoning Space Channel Five VR if this thing costs money. I feel I like it certainly might. There is a decent chance that they will charge you for this. They would be absolutely crazy. Well, um, I don't know. It is absolutely crazy, AJ. I don't know if you've noticed. The, the price, yeah. I mean, the They're price probably. is is definitely. Uh, to be honest, though, look, inexcusable. I've said this before. No excuse for this game being forty dollars. That is, that is. There's no excuse. And they even tried to soften us up a little bit, being like, you know, the original game was this long. Screw that. The original game, I think, was like longer. Was. than this was yeah. um yeah the original game was like 90 minutes this was like 45 minutes that is just for 40 dollars. so i think the original crazy. was 30 dollars on dreamcast i could be wrong yeah. about that that being said i do think the game the gameplay the graphics the music um by uh mizuguchi is amazing man so much fun these ripping bass lines i'm a bassist so i'm a little bass bassist biased um but the the game overall i thought was really fun just way too short so i um, hoping to see some new levels in this. It does look like there's some new levels. I don't really know what Hatsune Miku is, um, oh. but it's very popular. Yeah, and I learned what Hatsune Miku was when Hatsune Miku's first PlayStation VR game came around, where you stand in the audience and you shake light sticks to the beat of the music. Um, but then you realize, I'm not doing anything. I'm just watching a concert in VR, and I'm switching locations, and it's there's not terrible. a lot to it. It's Hatsune really Miku's terrible. super crazy popular, though. Yeah, yeah. well, I got the Hatsune Miku actual rhythm game that they put out on psvr not that long ago which is super expensive and i think it has like seven or eight songs it's not fun it's like a shitty air tone um i don't know <laughs> yeah I, I remember watching that it was it was terrible but really cool. anyway seven hatsune miku had everything like uh fantasy star online 2 just had a hatsune miku event and now she's getting put in space channel 5 i feel like that's their one franchise that they're just like we'll spam it everywhere Sega just needs to keep licensing licensing these games to VR. Just keep it coming. Um, we've already we know there's rumors about uh, House of the Dead VR coming, and I certainly hope it's true. Um, but for now, July 27th. So we still got some time to wait for this. Uh, you know, we'll see. Hopefully, like I said, some new enemies. I, I, one thing that I think gets overlooked in Space Channel Five, I will say, 
is the choreography when you see like all the little aliens dancing and the theatrical music and stuff i actually really like that um and i don't think that gets uh talked about enough because it's i think david moore said well is the uh dlc gonna be like a minute and a half long possibly possibly um it's it's possible uh oh crap hold on a second it's like an ad playing somewhere uh, i i want to bring this up because it's not I, we don't have it in our run of show but we but when dave said that or maybe it was you aj that no no dave just said that um say needs to start like farming out their franchise and stuff uh konami just went on the record like earlier today saying that they want to publish more western developed games uh of of their ips like they want they're going to basically farm out their franchises yes <laughs> so that like they needed to do this for like two years now at like, least so that they won't be developing it they won't be fronting any of the development costs but right. they, but, but no, then they'll good. be publishing it yeah so that i mean there's time. there are technically a ton of games uh, a ton of konami games cause that could be coming our way at some point and uh and the hope is of course that silent hill 5 Pennsylvania? what's that Castlevania, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's sure. That that's definitely a hope. But but the hope is you that the new, say Castlevania, the new Silent Hill uh, is going to be the first example of this. That's rumored to be developed by um, Japan Studio and then PlayStation Five exclusive, possibly with PlayStation VR support. Uh, so th this could have that could have been the thing that kind of led the way for all of this. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what Konami games kind of get revitalized um, through this new kind of corporate mo they have. I wonder if they've got a trade-off in the deal there somewhere where they get to make like a Call of Duty pachinko machines in Japan or something. Bring the Western ones to the pachinko. Take the Konami. You don't know about them making pachinko machines? No, we do. But is Call of Duty <sighs> popular in the East? I don't. All know. right, guys, Our we've Konami got. Hunt. Uh, we've got a donation before we move on to the next big game. Um, we've got a donation from Whitaker Stat One Game Cat <laughs> with a five dollar donation. And uh, it says, time to expand those VR libraries. Insane deals at the moment. Some really good games. What do you guys recommend the most? I recommend um, telling VR. You we do have, you yeah, we do have, uh, after we get through all the news, uh, we are actually going to break down every single game. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, nine, two, three, ten, four, eleven, five, twelve, seven, eight, nine, thirteen, 13 games 11, in 12, the days 13, of play 13. sale. And these are heavy hitter games. These are Good games. Honestly, there's like, I'd pretty much say buy everything in the days of play sale except for one game. But we will tell you soon, man. Thank you so much for the donation. Hope you're well, dude. Um, he's also said he was playing Scraper, which I recommended to him. Scraper's um, good, for sure. With the rudder. He's playing uh, Scraper with the rudder. And I think uh, I was like, I was like, yeah, with the rudder, that's a good one. That's the one game the rudder's awesome for. Yeah. There's like two, but yeah. No, that's it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, Guys, uh, we got some awesome, awesome news about a game that has come back from the dead Ooh. and uh, the VR the player um, posted. If you're a fan of PlayStation VR news and our pages, you should not have forgotten the Blunt Force game. Now, for those who don't know, Blunt Force is a World War II inspired game. By Monad Rock, the people that made Summer Funland. And you they had me right up until Summer Funland. <laughs> yeah well once you start rolling the video which you might have already started mm -hmm. you'll see that uh this gameplay is been this game started development four years ago and they recently checked back in and said no the game is actually still in development um that they are hoping to uh share some news in the coming weeks but i think uh people are gonna like what they see from the gameplay footage i mean it, this is obviously a CG trailer. Sorry. <laughs> like this from is the trailer, <laughs> right? This is obviously a CG trailer. This is like one of those like target, you know, target trailers when they when they say this is what we want the game to look like, but they actually just make the CG rendering of it like years before even like the engine's done. Um, there's no way that's legit. And so if they can hit that target, I mean, fucking, I'll be blown away. But so far, all we know of Monad Rock is Summer Funland, right? Right. So, I mean, I don't know, man. Fingers crossed, but that seems like a huge ask. It does, but man, I mean, it looks like they've already got some of the assets in the works. Um, and I, I had the YouTube, I had the YouTube muted and had it up, and it looked like you were talking, but I've got it muted, so it's like you weren't saying anything. Confuse me for a second. This uh, internet tricks, but but anyways, World War Two setting. And it looks like, you know, I know, what is it, Medal of Honor is coming out. So 
be nice for us to get something, you know, our little own Medal of Honor game to tie this over for now. Yeah, I saw the NPCs in this trailer. I don't know if it's going to be anywhere near Medal of Honor, but no. the part on the bike looked fun when he's riding the bike at the end there. He's like tooling around the city on the bike. Um, I also see footage in this. I don't know if we're watching the same trailer, but uh, they've got this guy, your character, double fisting pump shotguns and just not reloading them. Just like, <laughs> nice. Boom, boom, boom. And when he was doing one hand, he didn't cock it. It was just like a, a hand like Sarah attached. Connor style. Well, I mean, you still got to hock, cock it, right? I don't know. Yeah, Sarah Connor did that. You, you know what I love about video games? Yeah, not doing that. You ain't going to do shit. That's true. Right? I don't know. But movie VR, controls, man. Yeah, shit. VR is a little bit different, man. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, I'm okay with it. It's, I was never a fan of like, oh, manual reloads. You know, I know, I know the gun nuts love it. But like, you know, it, it uh, takes a little while to get used to for, you know, when you're used to hitting square in a normal game to reload. Um, and so it took me a little while to kind of get over that and be like, oh, yeah, no, manual reloading is really cool. Um, but every so often, man, like if you just want to give me like an arcade shooter and like you don't want to like you're not shooting for realism, then like, you know, give me give me something ridiculous. Give me an easy reload where you shake your gun like in a Immortal Legacy. I was like, you know what? That's that's actually cool sometimes. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. stuff like that. I mean, in this trailer, though, the guy's just literally pointing them forward and just they just keep shooting. He doesn't shake them. He doesn't move them. He doesn't go like that or anything. He just boop, 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 boop. <laughs> this is supposed to be like an arcade shooter, by the way. It is it not. Look like it looks it like is not a, a, it's not a story fit. driven thing. Oh, it's wait, it's more like on. an arcade shooter. No, 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 dude. Are we looking at the same trailer? Because the thing I just watched is like far ranging it's like a dude jumping out of a mili- military helicopter and then oh, like no we're, we're watching shop, definitely like a different trailer up. and then he's like in a house looking through trinkets and then he's out on the street Hold like looking second. at npcs walking by and there's trolleys and shit it did not look like an arcade shooter it's well it said this. arcade path so maybe maybe there's an arcade mode um go to, and then yeah, like go to mode. Force. What is, what's the one i just looked at I'm is it, uh, is it a gameplay trailer? This Oh, no, okay. Holy crap. This looks radically different. Holy crap. Hold on a second. Let me download this yeah, real quick. Are we talking about the same game? Yeah, this, no, this is like a two-minute trailer of like shit that I don't think I've seen before, to be honest with you, and it's from just a few months ago. It still says Monad Rock, so I have to assume it's the same thing. It's like February trailer, right? Oh, are you on the Monad Rock uh, I mean, that's, YouTube channel? You no, know, in the video it said Monad Rock oh, okay. at the beginning. Hold on a second. I, I got to see this, and I want to show everybody. Real quick, as soon as my video downloader decides to work, um, it did. Um, was it was it showing teleportation? Because that's what I saw in the preview. Um, I didn't see one way or the other. I don't remember. It didn't. He was mostly standing in one spot shooting stuff, and then he was riding a bike. I don't know. Well, it'll be interesting to see if I get the correct one here. But still, it's way different than the one I saw before, and it's taking forever. So, uh, AJ, do we have a? They just said it's still in development. We don't. We didn't get any more updates other than that. So Polish Paul actually just sent me a private message um, that gives us an update on it, and basically said that they, because of uh, COVID nineteen, um, that they do have some delays. By the way, thank you, Paul. Um, that they don't have an ETA on the game right now, but they are hoping to inf- uh, let us know soon. He says they are planning to put it on the PC side first. However, they want to launch the PSVR version a bit later with all the DLCs which are planned. Hey, can I just um, say real quick that Kieran Glaster uh, in the chat said everyone knows how to reload. Just shoot off screen. Uh, that's my favorite shoot light, off screen? light gun yeah. comment ever. I love light gun shooters. All right, I, <laughs> here, let's get this trailer up on the screen here. This is a, this is a totally different one, and we'll see we'll, we'll see how this looks. See how this looks. But um, yeah, so probably going to be a while before we we see this one. But at least uh, we'll get an update from them within the next couple, sometime in the next couple, few weeks or so. This looks like um, gameplay. This doesn't. This looks way less like CG than the fir- first thing we saw. This thing looks yeah, like. Yeah, that's why it, I was confused when you were saying it looked like computer generated because that all looks in engine to me. Yeah, no, this is definitely in engine for sure. It says for internal use only. It's like who the fuck yeah, this shit. Wow, so let's get some. Uh, it's like let's pick things up and throw them. Definitely, they showed just just showed some teleportation. Uh, but let's see if there's any. I mean, obviously they have to have it full of commotion in a game like this. I say obviously, yeah. but you know, I've been wrong before. Yeah, this, is, this is definitely much different. I do hope if you like jumping out of this airplane, doing like the airborne thing that uh, 
you get to actually do that. Dude, I got to say, like, they are replicating the stuff from the CG trailer, like, perfectly. Yeah. Like, you can tell, it you can tell like... it's an engine now, but, like, it's it looks great. So, I mean, it's obviously on P- running on a PC, but damn, they did a <laughs> yeah. great job. Or Seek, or Seek pointed out that in the bottom right, it says for internal use only. No, Brian, you got the leak. You got the leak. Oh, sorry. sorry. AJ, AJ, AJ has admitted he doesn't pay I attention was, to us. I was doing a lot of things. I was doing a lot of things, okay? Um, like listening to Orsi. Right. So but yeah, we're, really, we're, uh, you know. Sitting here I, talking I, to us. Thing, what other things were you doing? <laughs> I just get Orsi up here to replace Brian so you could just listen to him instead. Um, I, Brian wouldn't mind taking Sorry, I wasn't off, listening. Right? I, I, I wouldn't but, mind taking about a month <laughs> off if Orsi wants to take my place for a while. That's totally so, cool. So this game was announced originally four years ago. We got an update from it two years ago. Now, another two years later, we get this other update. So, obviously, facing some challenges. Obviously, they did their Summer Funland thing. Um, but, yeah, just... just uh, I'll put a pizza a bet on the fact that this is going to be a PlayStation 5 game, not a PlayStation 4 game. Oh, yeah, I would think so, too. So. And I think, like, 2021, like, late 2021, even maybe 2022... Um, could this, be a while. This trailer goes on forever too. I just saw the part that Dave was talking about with the riding the bike through the street. It seems like very, very cool, very diverse uh, gameplay mechanics here. I love yeah. this. I'm intrigued. Right on. All right, that is Blunt Force by Summer Funland developer Monad Rock. I have to giggle every time I say it. I was like, well, you guys. Would... I mean, listen, <laughs> if we went from Marvels to fucking Shadow Legend, then anything yeah. is possible. That is true. Right. Went from We're Archangel to Saints and Sinners. Anything yeah. is possible. Well, Archangel is pretty good, though. Yeah, but, but Saints and like, Sinners is fucking really good. Yeah, that's true. All right. Um, all right, so next on the list, we have a game that Hibsy. Wait, 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 game- hold on. Nick Mueller is like, definitely put Orseek in there. Like, wait a minute. I, I feel <laughs> like that was an attack on me, Nick Mulo. Get Scrape those barnacles uh, and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no one has any idea what we're talking about except for me, Nick, and Jeremy. All right. All right, hold on. You gotta get this tip real quick. Oh, hold on. Let me bring it up. Let me bring it up. Let me bring it up. And this is from Uncle JC, the stray game cat, for the fourteen ninety nine donation. Says I've rolled some forceful blunts in my time. This looks fun in a different way. Meow scratch. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for the donation, Uncle JC uh, or Uncle Jesse. Uh, have mercy. No, you had it right the first time. No, I know, but I like to call him Uncle Jesse because I like to quote Uncle Jesse and say things like. Have mercy. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, like I was saying, Hibsy the Game Cat meow, uh, was kind enough to he 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 was quick and he found this on the PlayStation España store, and um, it's another horror game. Actually, now the horror games are starting to come out again after going disappearing forever, um, and it's called Do Not Open. Yo, I got to say something about Do Not Open. Please do. I'm excited because I like scary things. Really? I, I mean, I figured I would I would come out of the closet and tell everybody here live on air, I like scary games. I know you didn't know that about me, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, fucking, I don't know. I don't. I don't know much about this. I don't know what to what what to say about it quite yet. It, it's obviously uh, the rough translation was like it's an escape room game. But it's, uh, but it's influenced by, and then they listed like every single horror author ever on the face of the planet. Like, I mean, everybody. And like even people like, I mean, whatever. And so they were just like trying to rope every single person in. Um, and, and that's, dude, I, I feel like that's like when Esbire 1 compares himself to Metal Gear Solid, you know? It's like, back off a little bit and like, give yourself some room to breathe and, and like lower expectations a bit. Because like you just compared this game or you said it's like influenced by every single horror author and horror movie director ever made. So I don't know. Was yeah, it called Do Not Open? It, I just, I fin- I, yeah, it's called Do Not Open. I stopped typing halfway through and then forgot what we were doing. <laughs> All right. Um, did I just see Hibs in there? Got a couple. Um, another donation real quick. Hugh Guyver with the 10 Aussie donation says beer mug, yeah. wine glass, pizza, bag of money, cat. I like all those things. Shout out to your cousin Mac. Love that dude. Thank you, Hugh. Um, but yeah, I, I think I saw. Didn't I see like it say like influenced by like Edgar Allan Poe or something? Yeah, Edgar Allan Poe, Stephen King. Um, I mean, uh, I love Stephen King. 
right? I mean, I don't, I don't even remember who else it was. It was. That means uh, it's going to have a horrible ending. I can already tell you. <laughs> if it's, if those are the end, it, and I don't mean horrible as in like bad. Like I mean horrible as in like it's not going to end well for you at the end of this game. Right. Doesn't seem like you're going to open something. You're going to open something at the end of this game. I'm calling it now, and it's going to fucking kill you. <laughs> okay, so you say, for, for this, we seek to innovate, but at the same time, we want to soak up all the great geni- geniuses of horror, or, or of terror, from Edgar Allan Poe to H.P. Lovecraft, Clive Barker to Stephen King, Guillermo del Toro, or Ari Aster. I'm like, Jesus wow. Christ, man. It's like, you really, that's, that's a spectrum of horror all over the yeah. place, dude. Yeah. But that's all writers, though, which is great. No, they're not. Those are directors. Ari Aster is a director. Um, Clive Barker is a director. Yeah. Like, like Ari Aster did Hereditary yeah. and uh, Midsummer. Yeah, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, so I mean, it's 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 writers, it's it's, it's everywhere. Yeah, Hellraiser. yeah, I guess no, you're right because yeah. yeah, Stephen King duh, did like a bunch of stuff. Yeah, never mind. But I mean, it's still it's 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 ridiculous, and so I just hope they're not setting themselves up for failure here and by like kind of overstepping and saying just be like, hey man, we made a cool escape room game, like just leave it at that. Like don't, don't be yeah. like you know comparing yourself to every <laughs> fucking awesome thing ever made. Warren Gore says, like the mist ended. Dude, my one of my friends hates the mist so much. And I love that movie. Um it's not like the greatest movie ever or anything, but so I, the, I was that the one in the grocery like store? It. Yes. I and read, like I the, read that in Paul, four past midnight. Um you you what? That was one of the short stories in Four Past Midnight. I think it was like uh, okay. that the Langoliers, like there was a few other popular ones in there. Yeah, I don't know how the book ended. Um, but the movie poorly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my friend absolutely hated that movie so much. And I always, just to piss him off, I will just mention that movie and he's just like, fuck <laughs> you, man. Fuck you. I, I like, I like Stephen King's way of having a unhappy ending. I think that's, I think it's normal for a horror movie to not have a happy ending. I, it's, it's like, I don't, I don't all, think it's the all, unhappy all thing. It's the unsatisfactory thing. It's like, yeah, it's I like, would agree with that. No, but any movie that didn't have a happy ending, he hated. So I'd always give him shit for it. No, I hate happy endings. Happy endings are bullshit. Because does life ever have happy endings? No. <laughs> Sorry. <I'm> emo. <laughs> So, uh, so this looks pretty cool, and in the, in the trailer it does say coming soon, which, as we all know, could be any time between now and fucking four years from now. I mean, we're still waiting for Mind Taker. Everyone's forgotten what Mind Taker is. You want to watch the trailer? There's a cat in it. It's adorable. <laughs> but it's, put it up. Yeah, we can watch it. Um, yeah, you said you think it's going to be a long time before we see this. No, I don't. I because because this looks like a. It popped up on the. It popped up on the store. On the store. What's no, that? I'm sorry. It popped up on the PlayStation España channel. Um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, we've we've also gotten trailers on the on the US PlayStation uh, YouTube channel that like also didn't come out. Like, remember we got Baby Hands? Remember Baby oh, Hands? True. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck was that? People were saying that Good Dog, Bad Dog reminds them of Baby Hands. I guess because the perspective, you know, maybe. On the ground. But I will say that if. Let's let's hope it doesn't remind us of Baby Hands because I don't want to look forward to another bad game. Uh, here's the Mind Taker trailer, just for anyone curious. Except let's not show the small version of it. Let's show the normal size version of it. This this. So, do this you have sh- any info on this game? Mind any Taker. Info? No, I am any other info on Do Not Open. Uh, I just uh, it's it's and- timed, which I think is interesting. So I think it's the first, uh, other than maybe I expect you to die. It's the first timed escape room game. Uh, on PlayStation VR, um, which I think is interesting, an interesting take, because I think things like Dying, re- Be Reborn, um, and The Door, right? These are games that, like, just, right. they're freaky, and you just take your time, and you look around. Um, so this is, I'm just going to put up Mind Taker here, so we know what we're looking at. While uh, you're doing that, uh, Shen Muso, my dude, has a two donation, it says, has any game had 3D rudder support lately? Saints and Sinners? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Saints Hotel, Sinners did, right? No, it didn't. No, Hotel it's, it's, R&R did. Yeah, Hotel R&R did. Um, it's supposed to be having support for Saints and Sinners at some point. Okay. Um, I'm not going to lie. Then, I, I, I don't even test things for the 3D rudder anymore. I don't know why that little icon is still sitting in my reviews. It's time to remove it because if I don't test it, then I'm just throwing out inaccurate information at this point. Um, so it, does, it, right, it, right. Ne- it never says it in the store description, right? Never. It never has, and I'm assuming it never will. So Transpose like, added it. Zing added it. Yeah, no, tons of games added it, for sure. Contagion like added it. Yeah, yeah actually, it, it did get a, a couple decent games. The only thing is, though, I, I recommend it usually with action games, 
which is why I recommend it with uh, Scraper. Yeah. Like, especially having to do so much with just moves alone. Um, yeah. But. Guys, look how good Mind Taker looks. No, uh, no offense, Chen Muso, but like, this looks cool. <laughs> is this a game or a movie? This game, Mind Taker. So this trailer came out like two years ago or something. And yeah. and it's like, it's made by, I believe, a Spanish team. Uh, and it was being funded by PlayStation. So I, I assume this was going to be a PSVR exclusive, uh, PS4 slash PSVR exclusive. And uh, and it just looked amazing. And it was one of these many, many games that we got excited for. And it just fell off the face of the planet. And so it's like, dude, with Boy a Dear Father, hopefully on its way, do not open, hopefully on its way. And then I'm like, I'm in October, hopefully on its way. I hope we make it there. Because like, I don't know, anything could happen. I don't know, <laughs> right? The next four sweaty months are going to suck. And then we're going to have like this awesome October. And I feel like we could be setting ourselves up for an like last October. What did we get last October, AJ? We Nothing. Like, no, no. Didn't we get Spookies, Jump Scare Mansion? And, we got Spookies. And, and then we got No the, Way Out the, October five, 1st. Five Nights at Freddy's DLC. Right. And No Way Out. So it was kind of a weak October. But man, if we could get Just all three it. of these You're games. No Way Out. <laughs> if we could get all three of these games instead of all three of what we got last October, this could be a really cool, scary October. They really need to save the scary games for October. That was severely lacking. The year before that, we had ho uh, Home Sweet Home, amazing, so um, and we had um, trans Transference, which was pretty good. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, um, I love Transference. Yeah, some people really, really like Transference. It's so. incredible. Um, okay. okay, so moving on, guys. Moving on. There was a new game announced from. ILM X Lab, who just recently announced Vader Immortal coming to PlayStation VR this summer. But they have announced a new VR game called Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. Darth Vader, are you still here? Um, but this is a new thing. They say, quote, today we are really pleased to announce that we are in development on a new virtual reality experience. Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge in collaboration with Oculus Studios. Now, Vader Immortal was also in collaboration, I believe, with Oculus Studios. Not published, Brian. Do we? Uh, do we don't have? There's no trailer or anything for this, right? It's just like a, they're just talking about it. Um, yeah, I think there's no uh, gameplay yet. Um, yeah, I think, I um, but but essentially, it says uh, basically it's going to take. Uh, it says first look. They have the concept art. They said first look at the concept art of the Batu landscape. Here, I'll copy it and paste it to you. Um, bam, bam. Um, it's really silly. Um, they're talking about the game, uh, the ILM people, and uh, they say this represents another meaningful step in our transition from storytelling, one way communication, to story living, where you're inside a world making consequential choices. Uh, hmm. the, the word story living to replace the word storytelling is really silly to me. <laughs> they have it all. <laughs> The thing is in all caps, but it's still attached to the word story. Um, they're, yeah, they're this, like, we're making a video game is what we're doing, but we call it yeah. story lip. So what's interesting about this, too, is this is supposed to be this is going to be a VR experience that's going to be featured at Disney World or Disneyland, one of the two, as well as outside of it. So they're going to have a, a this Star Wars experience at the theme park, as well as coming to most likely PC first. Now, there is no for the record. There is no confirmation that this is uh, coming to PlayStation VR. However, I do f have a feeling that it's going to be a timed exclusive similar to Vader Immortal and will eventually make its way to us as well. Hopefully. I like Star Dude, Star Wars lore. Star Wars, like, I'm not the biggest Star Wars guy, but I, I like a lot of the movies. Um, and the lore is always really cool and fun. And the games. I've played like every, not every Star Wars game, but I've played a lot dating back to like NES and SNES. Uh, Super Star Wars, yeah. I played, I played all yeah, the Super the Star Wars, Return man. Of Jedi, all of those, yeah. I Super traded Empire. in like 30 Super NES games for the Super Star Wars trilogy. And uh, I, I know it really sucks, but yeah. um, the games were awesome, though. Um, yeah, no, Star, there were always, uh, I think I got into a lot of uh, Star Wars games on PlayStation 1, to be honest with you. There was, uh, I played I played uh, Masters of Terrace Kasi. I, I played oh, oh my god Terrace Kasi. I played Wait, Dark Forces. I played Wait, stop 
real quick? Yeah. Hey, AJ, did you say you love Star Wars Masters of Terrascasi? I am the I know. I'm the only person that loved Masters of Terrascasi. There's gonna be someone it. in the chat I that got, agrees with you. Fucking bloody roar fans, I'm sure, are all over this fucking piece of shit. I put in the time and I got really good at it. And I that loved it. Crash game. <laughs> it was not good. It's like the there only was, fighting game you had at the time, wasn't it? There was so many secrets. Uh and there was Would, it was so like, clunky. I loved it. It for a rental for a fun stupid weekend and then my friend and i were like all right we're done with this thing no. like pretty quick because like you said it's really clunky um it, i mean it's pretty much universally considered like the worst star wars game i think if not one of the worst but i mean different it's, it's pretty bad yeah. different i mean there were two well, episode I... one games on playstation yes. one which were not jedi power battles, battles. Jedi jedi power battles, battles and then battles the movie were, were right? the episode one games where you could reflect the shit it was like a third person action game yeah, that was a different one jedi well, power battles it was a different one then yeah that was a good oh, one. i didn't play jedi power battles jedi power battles one. was the equivalent of like a side scroller beat em up but in like 3d oh that's and, and it was and it was like two player it was oh, hardest. i don't i didn't though. remember it being two player that's cool yeah it was two player and you could like run it, it had like platforming elements um i literally just saw somebody posting about it on twitter and i was like ah yeah that oh, was, no, this that is the was, game I was talking about, I think. Is Phantom Menace? <laughs> oh, maybe it was Phantom yeah. Menace. The Star Wars Pirates games. One. Yeah, but, but anyways, I, uh, let me just go ahead and say one more thing about this game. Um, this game is supposed to take place between... Now, I think it's like a... It's not going to follow the main stories. I don't think it's going to follow Skywalkers, I don't believe. But it sounds like it does take place between The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. I forget the names of the new ones. There's like 15 um, Star Wars movies, man. I can't keep. I've up. always, yeah, I know. I've always loved the spinoff Star Wars stuff, though, for real. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. See, everyone knows. Everyone knows. Uh, power battles. Aceville knows power battles. Force Unleashed was pretty good. Um, Terrace Kasi was mentioned in the Han Solo movie. It's canon. <laughs> there you go. Bam. <laughs> And, and I know I'm pronouncing um, that wrong. I know it's not Terrace Kasi, but you know that's how I said it all my life, and I know that's totally that's wrong. Everybody I've never heard has said it. Um, there's uh, yeah. I mean, uh, the PlayStation Two ones. I think I played a crap out of two. There was like a Pod Racing one for that. It was like Episode yeah. One Pod Racing. Um, pod Racing one was N64 originally, and then there was uh, Super Bomb Bad Racing as well. This is real bad, that real bad shit. Um, but I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people spent a lot of time with that game as kids, and uh, there's probably some love for it out there somewhere. Yeah, uh, I think we do. We missed some tips here. I want to go back and uh, yeah. Um, don't forget to shout out the Empire too. N64. Shadows of the Empire. Sh oh, Shadows of the Empire. That that was actually a great yeah. game. Of All course, right. Kotor Knights of the Old Republic is the best one ever. Right. No, I mean that's Bioware. I mean fucking amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kotor one and two. Uh, let's uh. Fuck you, genetic blasphemy. I'm so blasphemous with my genetics. Uh, Five dollar donation saying, "Devastation, you're a bit subdued, dude. You okay? All three of you are so great. Appreciate you all. Heart, heart. You okay, Dave? Uh, you want to snuggle? Dave. You want to snuggle? Fine. That's that's an awkward one. A question to put on a tip, honestly. Me, Dave. But, oh, thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. But, but <laughs> me asking you if you want to snuggle isn't awkward. Let my muscles. Yeah, you do hurt. that all the time. I know. You're used to it. I like that. Maybe Fallout Boy can save me now. We also got Brian. Oh, sorry. I want, I we want got Fallout Boy a, to save us. We got a tip from Joe Grover, the FN Game Cat, with a $2 donation. Says Brian's, Brian's favorite, favorite 3D writer game. Oh, we started together. I thought we were going to finish together. <laughs> it's like it's like trying to like swing hit. I don't know. Yeah. That was so bad. Uh, anyway, what's your, what's your favorite 3D rudder game? So yeah. I mean, so I don't like playing any games with the 3D rudder, as everyone knows. I despise the thing. But my favorite game that supports the 3D rudder, a Mortal Legacy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I figured you were gonna use that loophole to answer the question, like not a game that you play with the rudder, but a game that supports it. That's the best one. Yeah. No. I. So. I nothing. Nothing I've ever played on with the rudder uh, is enjoyable to me. Uh, I also like to play games standing up whenever possible. I know that's not an option for everybody, so I totally get you know why the rudder is a good choice for some people. Um, but man, like I, I want to play Immortal Legacy standing and swinging my arms excessively and doing stupid things. Um, so anyway, 3D rudder, that's a thing. Can, can we never talk about 3D rudder again? I would love to. <sighs> All right. 
Um, but yeah, I, you know, obviously don't know anything about this game yet, but hope to see something eventually. Now, uh, Upload VR guys was going to have a showcase on the eighth that we were going to actually tag along and hijack from them. Yeah, I love hijacking um, their streams. They have they have a big. Uh, <laughs> Alex the Meh, I love you. But first, let's talk about Alex the Meh with the 199 donation. It says, do you think there'll be 3D rubber support next gen? Ooh, 3D rubbers. Why, why do is that like anybody else having on, deja vu? Like, I, I really feel like we had this exact same conversation once before. Or maybe I'm just having deja vu. Maybe it's a glitch in the matrix. Asked. I don't I don't remember having this conversation. Not about next uh, gen. So do you think the 3D rudder will be supported next gen? Oh, is that was that, uh, was that the actual question? I mean, Three, yeah, yeah there's some back, backwards actual. compatible games. Yeah, I mean it's just like a USB. Like I don't see why it wouldn't. But do you be think easy to just update the drivers and like I don't know? But do you think more more specifically? Do you think that PlayStation? I mean, 3D router will be needed next gen. I think we'll have new move right. controllers with analog sticks, and moving your right. thumbs is way easier than moving your legs and your feet and your heels and trying to right. like maneuver that saucer. Um, so I, yeah. I don't think it's going to be necessary next gen, I think is a better answer. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be people who want some weirdo input scheme for VR that sure. is like super niche and nobody likes except for a handful. Um, so I don't I mean, if they continue to support it on games that had it on PS4 and you can just plug it into your PS5, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. It, you know, games that are forward compatible. <laughs> Alex the Met put another comment saying uh, little star asterisk saying rubber. He meant rubber. Yeah. Oh, three D so, rubber. Okay, support. so can we clarify what a three D rubber is? Do you do you put that? Do you put a condom on your schlong? Yeah, and it's, uh, rubber. it's like a sex toy. It's a sex toy. Maybe it's like a rubber suit that has like haptic feedback, force feedback. I mean, are we there yet? Are we? Are we into like? Is this lawnmower man virtual fucking happening yet? Like, I don't. Think, I don't think <laughs> we're quite there. Oh, Joe, Joe Grover. Grover. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great rubber. minds, Joe. Great minds. Oh, what did I miss? I didn't see this. Joe Grover, the effing game cat with a two dollar donation, says, "Is three D rubber a haptic suit?" Nice. Yeah, it sounds like a sounds like a swimsuit, like a like a wetsuit. I mean, <laughs> oh man, I tried to, right. I went to try to mute my mic and I didn't get there in time, and then I kind of laughed because I couldn't do it in time, and then I laughed and sneezed at the same time, and it okay. really hurt. <laughs> you okay? That was like that oof, series of unfortunate events that just came out of my eyes. <laughs> It's yeah. a fabric suit. It, I love that, Dan. <laughs> Walking Dead. Oh my God, you guys! All right, so moving on. Um, uh, the the up the uh, upload VR showcase got pushed back to June sixteenth, and um, wanted to touch base on two things that have been confirmed so far. There's going to be more. Um, actually, three things. I guess I'll go ahead and add. But um, the first one is that I think. Uh, Fast Travel Games is going to be premiering their their new game. I talked. I did an interview with Fast Travel when um, Curious Tales: Stolen Pets came out, and they said uh, Andreas Juliason was he he had hinted that they were already working on their PS5 title. So this will likely be a PS5 title, um, probably PC as well. I'd imagine. But we're going to finally get to see what it is. And I think it's something brand new. This isn't going to be, it doesn't sound like it's going to be small either. Um, this sounds like they're going from Marvel's to Shadow Legend Jump, although they've already done Apex Construct before. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, T Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets was basically just like a side project. Um, and so, right. was, you know, they, they it, I don't want to call it taking a step back, but they were just like, hey, you know, he's dedicated a small team to working on this thing while most everybody's working on our next big, I don't want to say triple A title, but, you know, huge title. Uh, I'm curious to see what those guys can do because Apex led, uh, Construct, <laughs> I totally get that wrong all the time, uh, was a fairly early PSVR game, uh, you know, and it w obviously wasn't designed with full locomotion. It's obviously a teleportation game that they got patched in full locomotion. Um, and so, it, and I think that's how it got to PSVR. Um, but you could tell, like, it, it wasn't perfect. Um, and, and I do think that they've probably learned a shitload about making VR games in the meantime. So that, well, they've really also been working with Neat Corporation on budget cuts too, and yeah, 
they they formed an alliance with Neat Corporation. So I'm probably I'm, I'm imagine they all learned a little something from each other. Um, I still say to this day, somebody actually gave me, um, who was it? Somebody gave me like a shout out or something on Twitter saying that uh, I had recommended um, Apex Construct on sale mm-hmm. and that they seemed to be enjoying it. So um, that was pretty cool and nice of them to let me know. David Moore with the dollar ninety nine donation says, uh, doing a reaction video for Upload VR Showcase. Uh, not really. I think we'll probably make a breaking news report video. Uh, to kind of summarize everything that happens, but just like the PlayStation 5 event, we're going to live stream it. We're going to totally hijack that stream, and we're going to sit here and watch it together uh, and, uh, you know, give the PlayStation VR gamers a a different perspective on the show. You know, those PC VR gamers, they don't know PlayStation VR very well. They're like, I don't know how to use drift controllers. (laughs) No um, room it, scale tracking. I can't take a step one way or the other. I don't know how you turn in games. <laughs> <laughs> and so we just go, you know what? We got this shit covered. You guys go play PC. We'll take care of this shit over here. Uh, and so, you know, we're here for you guys. No worries. <laughs> uh, guys. Oh, God. Um, I bet, All right, so that, <laughs> that's been building up for a while. That was only part of the thing. Uh, Solaris, uh, or Solaris, I think it's Solaris. Um, First Contact Entertainment's futuristic next shooter um is going to premiere its first gameplay as well now i've said before you know first of all big shout out to uh first contact for their continual support of firewall zero hour i think you know even though i've spent hundreds and hundreds of hours in that game and and it's a little hard to jump back in from time to time um except for when there's a new big update uh, with the the support they've had for that game is fantastic, and they've they've done an amazing job. Yeah, no, I mean nonstop support. Uh, they they could have bailed fucking four updates ago and would have been like, yeah, you guys, thanks for all, thanks for supporting it as long as you did. You know, a bunch of new maps, a bunch of new contractors, this, that, whatever. Uh, and the fact that they've gone on so long and just, I mean, they're still teasing a new map. Uh, it's not out yet. Uh, I don't. Well, expect- I mean, it's not like the money teat ever dried up. You know what I mean? Like they've been selling stuff. They've been making probably the free plus game too. Yeah, but they—I mean—they've right. made their money on the season passes and the DLC stuff. You can buy the cosmetic stuff in the store. Like, I know people that spend a lot of money on that shit. I only bought one. I bought the very first one for those keys, and that lasted me. I still have like one or two keys left. Yeah, I think I have some keys too. I think I bought five keys, and I use like two or three. Yeah, uh, I feel like I bought them, and maybe I didn't though. And I don't think I've ever spent any money on Firewall other than the original purchase. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad they keep giving us stuff, but it definitely is in their own benefit to do that. Yeah. I'm excited to see the first gameplay of Solaris, and I'm definitely they're supposed to. They've already talked about maybe having, um, you know, servers for this game. It's going to be more team deathmatch focused. I thought it was maybe questionable decision to to stray away from a modern military combat shooter, which is like something that everybody's craving for always, and then go towards like a sci-fi, um, you know, way, but. But, you know, if the game is fun, then who cares? I hope you can slide. I, I'm really hoping they show the dude sliding in that second, in that couple seconds clip. And that was something that was in the, um, first of all, sliding in video games for me originated in Mega Man 3 back in the day on NES. But, um, and that was like amazing. But Crisis multiplayer, Crisis, the Crytek game, uh, Crisis 2 had sliding in the multiplayer PvP. And man, when you are sliding and you get a kill while shooting somebody while sliding, you feel like a fucking badass. Second row is the PlayStation VR game that does that. No. Which one? So close. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know what I meant? Oh my God, Sirento. I messed up. Remember when Tony Hawk introduced manuals and you could go from grinds to manuals and then like keep (laughs) looping the chains? Remember that, oh, yeah. guys? Remember Tony Hawk? Remember Tony Hawk? It's coming back. Yeah. No, yeah. but Sirento, this was the difference, though. Is Sirento, you just kind of landed and you slid. In Crisis, you actually, like, ducked down when you slid. Like, and I don't know. Something about that was really cool. Like, so really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, dude, I like, mean, we've seen such a small little clip of uh, Solaris, and I know it's not even a clip, it's like a teaser, right? And they're showing, like, the team running in, like, running in. This, this, They're definitely trying to tell us something here you know i i do think that sliding is going to be a thing because why why would you show that in your five second teaser if that's not a thing you know high action high energy sci-fi they're, they're definitely taking a little bit of a different approach and i think that 
you know, they, they've spoken so much. I know, like, Hess Barber even has spoken about, well, there's a reason why it takes 60 seconds between matches because we're trying to eliminate motion sickness. I think I think some people over there have been like, guys, I think, you know, we're we're good. We don't have to, we really don't have to worry about that as much as we thought we did. And so maybe like a more frantic, high paced, fast paced, uh, high action game uh, is what they're, you know, I, if I was a VR developer that was focusing on like a, a firewall like, like game, I'd really want to stretch my legs and see what you could do in a faster arcade based game. Um, so I'm assuming that's what they're doing over there. Uh, another tip from David Moore. Let me get over there and take it. <laughs> he says, uh, with the 499 donation, says, how about the GameCat tournament Sir Rypop is heading up? Yeah. Sir Rypop. So we definitely have, uh, thank you for the donation, David Moore. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys join the Discord server, we've got a huge firewall tournament happening. Uh, do you guys know the date of that off the top of your head? I can't switch over to check. What For what? <laughs> Where are you? The, the firewall tournament. <laughs> Hold on. Let me. I don't know. <laughs> Does I'm, anybody in the chat want to take over for AJ? <laughs> AJ, just go hang out in the chat. Get, we, we'll be fine I, without you. It'll I, be I, okay. Fuck, man. And when somebody <laughs> says Vanquish in the thing, I'm like, oh, I love Vanquish. Vanquish on started, PS3 I'm, was a I'm great game. Vanquish. I liked Vanquish. I've, yeah. I've never played Vanquish. They said oh, you can so slide good. in Vanquish. It and seems yeah, so generic at first when you start playing. You're like, oh, this is such a generic action game. I can't believe what Platinum <laughs> made this. And then you play and you're like, this is fucking incredible. Dude, I'm, uh, I might buy that on PC tonight. I don't know where the tournament is. I've never played it. Uh, Nick Milo says July 11th. So yeah. sign up to our Discord. There join our Big Fat Frog tournament. I trust Big um, Fat Frog more than I trust Nick. Yes. There we go. Dave Moore, Big Fat Frog. What's I forgive up? Nick. I don't forget. Okay. Dude. Or seek, um, or seek to take over the show. I don't fucking forget these things. <laughs> All right. So, so anyways, Nick um, Milo or seek um, take over for AJ. <laughs> the final thing. The final thing yeah. uh, for that we know about at least so far for the upload showcase is, I believe, the Saints and Sinners DLC. First DLC pack incoming. Ba-da! So, I mean, can we just can we just spitball here? Yeah. Oh yeah, I got some ideas already. <clears throat> Talk I think, to me. Um, Keep the areas that you've got already. You don't have to create a bunch of new areas. Oh, Just... Dave's like one of the developers now. What? What? What do you mean? Tell them. Tell them what needs to be in the game. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So we're just shooting save, shit. Save yourself some cash. Don't create a bunch of new areas for DLC first. Just populate the existing areas that you have, both during and especially post game, <clears> with <throat> some sort of randomized quests or like a little bit more meat. Add some characters that maybe recur across a few missions, like the. The main characters would like maybe just you know you had Casey you had um, May May right? Benoit yeah yeah and so like maybe throw a third character in there that sort of fits in with everybody and and kind of adds to the story or just uh, another side of New Orleans but just use the assets you've got and just add some more story beats maybe even with like a choice that makes a difference or something I don't know um, but yeah I, I don't think they have to add a whole lot more than just some spice on top. Uh, maybe some new weapons to craft stuff like that. Absolutely, I think I think those crafting tables are fucking ripe for DLC. I say just add like four or five new things, add a whole new row to each one of them, uh, recipes that you, or blueprints that you find, you know, out in the wild, or things or give you more reasons to upgrade the table as a whole. I mean, so many possibilities there. Uh, that that feels like the easiest way to add DLC to this game. Um, but I would like a new area. Give me a new area, because I think a lot of the areas, there's exceptions, but a lot of them have a very, very similar look to them. Uh, and I would really like something that looks radically different than the other areas. Um, but, you know, like, you just add another little circle on that map. It's, uh, I, I make it sound simple, but, you know. I got to agree with Justin Credible VR. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, he says they should add the tower, make the DLC all about getting to the top and stopping the remaining tower asshats. Um, if they added a DLC of just a new area, that would be the one um, that that I would think should be added. I'd love to climb up that tower. However, guys, they did say that we are listening uh, a lot before. And, um, you know, the, the two main things I've heard that people request for this game is multiplayer and, and horde mode. Hmm. So I feel like a survival mode or horde mode is the most practical thing 
to be added where you just go in and you just see how long you can last against a bunch of zombies uh walkers sorry um i think do, that, uh, inventory like where do you just go in with a set amount of items and you got to go as long as, as you can with that because <laughs> there's no like there's no crafting in the wild uh right right so, um right. maybe you all go in with like there's like a maybe a set number of items for everybody and y'all got to pick and choose from oh wait are you assuming no 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 don't assume multiplayer at all they when that's come up they've said well huh, that's one of those things well uh, no no, no. Really Just, i think what aj is so. specifying here is that not multiplayer in the core game but multiplayer in a separate horde mode and i feel like that's uh, the only reasonable expectation we could expect for multiplayer if there was multiplayer added yeah i mean i've heard the, the cats actually had some amazing ideas about adding like a factions like like having having multiplayer with like factions and stuff and you can actually like work against each other and i was like that's actually a really good idea i think it's that was great. like Kubernetes but and, that sounds like um, saints and sinners too like that doesn't sound like yeah, dlc for saints yeah. and sinners yeah. for me horde mode sounds like the most practical one some sort of horde mode and if there was multiplayer right. then you know it would be that but that would be uh that would definitely be you know that's just going by what what the people have requested um, the most the people have spoken AJ the people have spoken and he's reading all of your comments and I don't chat. I don't want to speculate too much um, on this but I think I think we covered about everything po that could possibly happen um, maybe they'll maybe we'll be surprised who knows but June 16th they've uh, hinted that they will be showing some some new announcements and I believe that will be the first DLC for Saints and Sinners cannot wait love the game 10 out of 10 Still, in my opinion, as of right now, still the best PSVR game. Boom. I mean, if Resident Evil 7 didn't exist, absolutely. I totally agree with that statement. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, so surprising news today, guys. Uh, Arizona Sunshine got a deluxe edition today on the PlayStation Store. If you already own the game, you can get the deluxe upgrade from Vertigo Games. Uh for ten dollars and it includes both dlc packs the dead man dlc and the damned uh dead man dlc is about 45 minutes the damned is about an hour or like five hours expensive. and the base price of the wasn't one of them five bucks and one was 250 how are they charging 10 for them together well, because there's I'm not doing more it. stuff there's there's more. <laughs> there <laughs> is the arizona sunshine soundtrack um oh, which also which features 12 tracks and a bonus early demo sketch by jonathan VD Winch Garden. Uh, there's the Arizona Sunshine PlayStation 4 theme. So I got to be honest with you, I'm a theme. I'm a dynamic theme collector. Guys. Is it a dynamic? You oh, it? Yeah. You're gonna use that one. You know what? It doesn't actually say dynamic. Theme. Well, it's probably to... not. Yep. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. Mm. But I might. I might try it out anyways. But this is the interesting part. It includes the Arizona Sunshine Pack Four after the fall which is their next game coming out. It says, From the creators of Arizona Sunshine, After the Fall is an upcoming VR action first-person shooter with seamless four-player co-op gameplay at its core. <laughs> Show your survival legacy in its ravaged multiplayer world by donning the Arizona Sunshine colors with this themed item pack, including Arizona Sunshine weapon skins, sun, uh, gear, badge, and badge. Wait, so uh, weapon skins, gear, and a badge. You get this for after the fall when it comes out. Yes. Yes. Okay. The last thing that I want in after the fall, which Thank looks you. like a very good game, is to be reminded of Arizona Sunshine. <laughs> I don't want to see anything that looks like Arizona Sunshine in that game. I want to see that game being way better than Arizona Sunshine. I could give less than half a shit about yeah. any of that extra stuff that's in here. If they're charging extra, I would say just buy the DLCs at regular price, unless you're like a super fan or something. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, as much as I've kind of come around on Arizona Sunshine and go, oh, yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, it's not the greatest, you know, first person shooter we have, but it's OK. I, I enjoy it now. It's OK. Yeah, it's very average. The soundtrack or anything, right? No, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah well, let's listen to that in our spare time. Right. Yeah. No, uh, it's what, what it is, though, is um, it's it's such a it's such a huge seller, man. It's always topping the top 10 PSVR charts. So, yeah. like, they'd be they'd be silly not to try to like get people go, Hey, you know, that game that you already love, spend some money now to get something for our next game. And, and just kind of tie it all in together, get people, you know, excited because you want you want to make that connection. If you're an Arizona sunshine fan, you vertigo games wants to make that connection with you to say, Hey, our next game is coming and here's stuff for it. 
before you even get it. So it's like a pre-order that like you don't have to pre-order. You know, you're buying stuff for it. And then you'll be you like, oh, I already have this stuff for it. I'm convinced to, to get the game the second it comes out. I think it's a good marketing tactic. It is. It is. I, I, yeah, it gets you, gets you excited. Dash David Dash says, after the fall is my most highly anticipated game. Looks amazing. Can't wait. I think uh, I think he I beat the game with uh, David. David, that was you, wasn't it? That was good times, man. Dash David Dash definitely helped me out in Firewall. Um, we had we had a night where he just plowed through opponents, and I was like just yeah, riding his coattails. Nice. Dude's good. What's up? Dude's real good. Um, but but yeah, it, I think it's a good marketing strategy. I like I said, for me, I just want the theme. Did, did anybody pre-order the game and get the dynamic theme from? It was it was a theme, or I'm sorry, I want to know if it's a dynamic theme or not. I guess I'll have to figure it out. Um, but really, I am excited for After the Fall as well because I feel like they'll take everything they learned. And all the money they made from from Arizona Sunshine and make something a little bigger, better four player, you know, co op game. Um, you know, I'm really hoping this is that Left for Dead in VR that we're looking for. Yeah, for sure, for sure. David Moore says Arizona Sunshine is dull. It's, it, the, the the opinions of Arizona Sunshine are all over the place. Yeah, my opinions have been all over the place. <sighs> yeah, my opinions all over the place as well. Yeah. Because I run into like these game breaking bugs every single time and it really takes the fun out of it. But there's things that I do like about it as well. And there's things that tons of people like about it. Some people are like, it's best with the aim. So I'm like, it's best with the moves. Um, Rise so everybody likes the story mode is like, meh, but the horde mode is great. He said he has great memories. Horde of mode that. is awesome. Great memories yeah. of playing that with his brother and shit. And I was like, man, I played the horde mode with all the old school game cats back in the day. And like, we had a blast, like not the launch horde map. That was terrible. Oh, the but when they updated it, it was map. great. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. played with you. Yeah. Like yeah. me, you, a couple other peeps. I like Seraphim might've been in there. I don't know. Well, Lewis Knight was definitely there. This could be the Mandela effect. Maybe none of you were there. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, But yeah, I'm going to find out that theme and I'll get back to you guys on it. Um, or seek the game cat says PS5 needs VR themes. I agree. Mm-hmm. I want VR. Oh, yeah, that needs that to be, be a incredible. Theme. Oh, yes, I would pay like three bucks for one. Ooh, three dollars. <laughs> three bucks, dude. The the regular ones like, like four dollars sometimes. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, oh, well, you, you, you'd be you'd be hitting five dollar territory at least. Oh, okay, I'll pay five bucks. Like, I'm I was sticking th- at three. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> yeah, four fifty. Oh, why are you bargaining with me? <laughs> um, Doesn't your uncle work at Sony? Uh, <laughs> how do you think he got this job? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't his bloody war love, that's for sure. AJ, what's our next story? Our next story, Brian, <laughs> is a game that just <laughs> came out this week. The only game that came out this week, I guess, and it's me called up. Good Dog, Bad Dog. I feel like those are your conflicting opinions about Bloody Roar. AJ's like Good Dog, Brian's like Bad Dog. I'm like, because don't you play as a, can't you be like a wolf or something in that game? Yeah, you there's a character that transforms into a wolf. There we go. Google boy. Yeah. Are you a good dog or a bad dog? Guys, tell us about good dog, bad dog. Brian. <laughs> Brian, Brian I fucking hate this game. God, scored. I really hate this game. It's the lowest score I've given since I've started giving scores. There are certainly wow. games like Tale of a Fragmented Star that I probably would have matched this <laughs> score with. Um, or like, I don't know, maybe vr apocalypse or boxing apocalypse or all the apocalypse games um apocalypse rider yeah no every every game with apocalypse 2.5 um dude this so it's been a long time since i played a game where i sat there and just was like i am not having any fun basically from the second i started it to the second i finally turned it off in this but this game i wanted i wanted this to be a quirky little fun indie game Right where he's like, oh, this doesn't look terribly good. Maybe the soundtrack's crap, but you, but there's a lot to do, and you run around, and you know, you get to be goofy and and and, and laugh and have fun, and yeah, you know, maybe it'd be good for streaming. I didn't have a single second of fun this entire time. What about you? And guys? I have to agree with that 100%. Um, this game seems like when you first start playing, like, hey, maybe it'll be like a super stupid, low budget, like doggy GTA. Like you're running around the neighborhood. <laughs> You can fuck shit up or you can do whatever you want because it is kind of just like open. You run around and kind of decide what you want to do. But you realize very quickly that you can't really interact with anything in a fun way. Like, get this. I walked up to a fire hydrant 
and I peed on it. That's like the ultimate dog thing, right? Yeah. Nothing happened. I didn't gain points. I didn't lose points. No one reacted. It's as if the game was just like, oh, wait, would a dog pee on it? I don't know. And like the only thing you can do is really just like bark at people and bite people. Or I guess you can eat your own shit. I did a bunch of that. I would eat mushrooms and trip I didn't try and then that. the poop would come out and then I'd eat the poop. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I'd start puking in the sidewalk and she'd say, bad dog. Um, but yeah, there's, <laughs> it's so thin. There's nothing fun to do. And like, you'd think maybe, oh, there's this table with like stuff on it. Maybe I can jump up there and knock it over and like cat lateral damage the shit. Nope, nothing. Uh, like you have a very limited tool set in this game and none of it's fun. Tool Not set. a single action that you can take is fun. So um, the other we, thing, oh, sorry, I just want to say real quick, I don't usually call out stuff like this, but this was egregious. And I feel like it may say something about the psychological character of the man who made this game. Um, every female NPC in this game is built like Dolly Parton, man. They just got like <laughs> the biggest, like ridiculous rack. And every male NPC is just this like skinny bookworm dude. <laughs> and it's like this guy is definitely a skinny bookworm dude who has certain ideas about what women should look like. Um, somebody said it's just the Unity Asset Store, but I know they have more than one body type in the Unity Asset Store. Um, so it's weird, like it's a kid's game, but you feel creepy because you're just walking really low, looking up at ladies' tits the whole time. It's a very strange feeling. So the first thing I realized or saw that didn't happen to you, Brian, was that um, I, I didn't notice because I was so miserable. I, was, oh, yeah. I, I had so many I'm other complaints find... than the character models. <laughs> I didn't even address the graphics in my in my four minute rant oh, of a review yeah like that was the least of my concern and the graphics are the animation acceptable at best no the animations are terrible like if you turn around and look at your owner while you're walking uh she'll just like slide along the ground at first and then she'll like judder and then she'll move this way and then she'll brian didn't run into it's any like, technical well, issues you know it's first not of a all technical issue. no aj it's the graphics like the <laughs> animations are just shit they're really really bad especially um, if you look away for a sec and then catch them like when you're not supposed to be looking at them. Warren Gore, the Gorius game cast says you can trip on mushrooms in this game. That's kind of cool. All That's it the does only cool thing about the, the game. edges it makes of it... the screen kind of turn slight different colors. It's not like the whole world the, the, the gets wavy or, or, or psychedelic, which it would have been kind of cool. It would have been something. Yeah. But just like the rest yeah. of this game, they really phoned it in. For sure. So um, I'd like the to other... say oh, that did you play? If... Yes. I okay. played last night. Um, cool. And, you know, so the first thing is, and Brian mentioned this in his review, but the move controllers, it's got move support. So I was hoping if there was one game to have this Gorn Hotel r, r alternate option of like grabbing and pulling, I would love to have two dog paws and like actually grab and pull in this game and then like, you know, hold the things to sprint faster. But, you know, for me, what, the reason I mentioned technical is like there's just so many technical things about this game. Like, you know, when you think of like a kid's game like this, something like this, um, you know, you think of like Kitten. Like Kitten was like actually, even though I felt like that was maybe too difficult for kids, um, it was still like kind of cute and fun and polished. Um, and this this game seems more like a project that somebody was just really passionate about and made. But when it comes to like competing on the PlayStation Store, like this doesn't feel like a PlayStation game to me. Also, twenty five dollars. Um, twenty five dollars. This is not even a seven dollar game. Good honestly. God! Maybe you have $7. no. I to me, this is a this is a two dollar game that you pick up and you go, oh, it's well, it's two dollars. Let me try it out, and you go, well. That wasn't that great, but it was two dollars, and so it's okay. But twenty five dollars, we're about Insane. to get into the sale, and in here in a second, there are triple A PlayStation games, PlayStation VR games, triple A quality for like ten dollars right now, and to, for this to be twenty five dollars, I was like, oh my god, yeah, um, insane. Yeah, so many amazing games. So like, forget about the sale. The retail price of a ton of games on the PlayStation Store, twenty dollars. Right. I mean, the Solus project is twenty dollars. That's insanity. Right. Yeah. You say you, you and then this the game's five dollars more than that. Yeah. It, it makes no sense. The price is astronomical. And I've done I played for two hours um, and I did every I did everything that you could possibly do in this game before that time was up. You the, the, the weird thing is, it's like it's called Good Dog, Bad Dog. So it's about this karma system that they've got in place. And the only time that that matters is 
go be bad as bad as you can for 15 minutes. And all you have to do is like just go bite people a lot. And and you've you've gotten that trophy. You've gotten to the uh, the crazy high negative score. And then you go do the the the, the fetching thing. You go you go play catch or whatever. Um, and that's how you get another crazy high positive score. And then after that, like the good dog, bad dog shit doesn't matter. The karma meter means absolutely nothing after that. You go bite, you go around, you fucking get toys out of the yard. Uh, and then that's you've kind of run out of things to do. This is a sandbox game with nothing to do in the sandbox. Thank you. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's a sandbox where, game. It's a sandbox game where when you push the sand aside or build something with it, it just goes back to where it was before. Because if I scare a lady, she doesn't run off somewhere or like permanently respond to me a different way. She just runs two feet and then starts walking again right next to me. And if I bark at her, she goes, oop, and then she comes right back. You talked about that in the review, Brian, where people just like immediately go back to their original yeah, walking seconds pattern, as later. if you had as if you had never done anything in the first place. Right. If I pee on a lady's leg and then I just walk up to her and I'm like waving my tail and she's like, good boy. Where is this? Where's the sandbox in it? It's this not a game. Sandbox. You, you just reminded me to like, I don't know. This game has one of my pet peeves in games. Blah, 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 oh, yeah. blah, 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 good dog. Blah, 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 yeah. Good dog. <laughs> like this, this was like, a Simpsons it, joke from 20 years ago where Santa's a little helper. You see it from his perspective and it's like, blah, 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 blah. You know, and it, it's yeah. like, it was kind of funny in the Simpsons, but this was, this, it, this was not. It enjoyable. is one of my pet peeves like, for games to do that. <laughs> it's like dollar for Simlish. There's no Simlish in the Simpsons uh, games. Oh, right, right. right yeah. Right, yeah. 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 So, it's, it's, it's um, really amazing. But also, so, the, as far as sound goes, the soundtrack. Oh, the repetitive is, track. Is, so there's they two have like, songs, and each song is literally like a two second seconds. loop. <laughs> it's like no, a twenty. No, yeah. it's a two second loop. The one outside yeah. when you're walking around, it's literally just this much music going over and over and over yeah. and over and over and over. Dude, editing it, that it, review like today was painful. Water. It's insane how much I hated that soundtrack. But you can turn it off. So do that um, immediately. I, I think the most surprising thing to me is I, I, for being a simplistic game, a more simple game, it was, I ran into technical issues. I mean, I, I was I saw the mailman. So like I, I started I went down the street, um, you know, wagged my tail and they were like, blah, 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 blah. Good dog. And I was like, OK, karma. I started walking back. There's a lot of texture pop in, which I was like, OK, well, that's you know, I can deal with a little bit of texture pop in and stuff. And um, but then I see the mailman and I'm like, yes. So I start running towards the mailman. He stops at the mailbox and then he just fucking disappears out of thin air. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Like he just disappears. Dude, and dude, the last couple seconds of my review, I didn't even talk about this glitch that I encountered, but I show it. Um, during the last few seconds when the music is playing and it's and it's i'm on the leash my owner is ready to take me out on, on a walk and <laughs> hey james you're all blurry what's going on right now? and 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 he's he's like he's running in place and i'm stuck on a leash i can't go anywhere because we are because he's stuck in place and we can't go oh, anywhere. but didn't you learn how to break off the leash i did because i read about a mile of text on the ground all, yeah. all of the explanations are like, take the right move controller and push this button. And like, but it's so wordy instead of just showing what button to push. It's like you have to yeah. read a paragraph to understand a simple button combination. It's like, what is going on in this game? It's like this is they the people who made this obviously don't play PlayStation VR games. Otherwise, nor did they take any feedback from the community. No feedback from the community at all. I mean, even Iron Man VR, which is being published by Marvel. Uh, listen to, to community feedback has a has a finger on the pulse of the community and this doesn't wazi smazi yeah, says i love okami here what wazi smazi says i love okami but the blah 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 is irritating yes i know i almost couldn't play uh okami because of that but okami um, luckily okami was so good in every other regard, every other thing yeah that, like that um, you can excuse things like that in a game like okami which is beautiful and, and has awesome puzzles and gameplay that's just fucking like zelda like uh real quick joe Go grover red rover red rover with the f and game cap five dollar donation says the trailer says greatness awaits well it still waits any opportunity to tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's sometimes when Sony should be like, uh, you're not allowed to use that at the end. This is on, <laughs> Just the, leave that this is on the PlayStation okay. YouTube channel. Like, I don't understand, like, why the, the games that Sony chooses to promote over there and then other ones get totally ignored. Uh, how does this one, how does this one get the, the Sony bump? 
I, I, I'd like to know what, what happens behind the scenes for that to happen. All right. I got to step away for two Chicago seconds, guys. Um, used to work at Sony. Brian, can you finish this one up? And then uh, do you want to talk about the, the pistol whip news that you potentially heard? Sure. Um, and then I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Spoilers. Okay. I'm waiting for you to leave. <laughs> waiting. There he goes. Go. I don't know. Nope. Oh, wait a minute. Dave, you can't leave me. Just, uh-oh. Uh, guys, it's just, it's just you and me. They, they left me. I don't know what happened. So real quick, we got Mick Coles with the two quid donation saying, what a bag of bollocks. Plan Nintendogs instead. Dude, Nintendogs would be amazing. I, I mean, Nintendogs would be perfect for a VR game. Uh, like, I feel like Neku Atsume was almost there. Uh, Johnny Rye Pops' life. Oh, funny tiger. fact. Um, we didn't cover this in the news today. Um, AJ and I talked about it, but the Japanese PlayStation, or no, it's Famitsu, I think, put out a thing where Shuhei Yoshida did um, 10 recommendations for PSVR games that are in their days of play sale. Interesting and he had some list very too. strange, very strange ones. I'll pull it up real quick. Uh, you have to translate it. There's not like a English version, but uh, one of them is Neko Atsume. Yep, number ten, I believe. And dude, I was so shocked because I think number nine was Last Labyrinth. Yeah, dude, he had some interesting choices on there, and he said something kind of creepy about Last Labyrinth. Dude. Oh, what did he say? Uh, I'll I'll read it. Hold on, I'm about to translate it. Um, it was along the lines of. Uh, and one of the ba- the best things about this game is that it lets you interact with the, the female in a way that only VR games can allow you to, which kind of plays into that whole like viewing room or like dressing room thing that you see where it's like some Japanese people concept of like a good mechanic is like, oh, it's so realistic because there's like a girl in your face. And don't you like just a girl in your face? Like we like it. Even, um, but oh, the, it's, it's the interaction with her creepy. is so terrible. I thought, it's, I thought Shuhei was a little more Western than that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's obviously a lot of love for Last Labyrinth, and I'm not somebody who shares that love. So I think there are certain people who do find something special in that game, and I just will never be there. I'll never find it. Um, what, what else we get on that list, Dave? Um, I'm trying to find it. I think I was on its Twitter, but I, I didn't like retweet it or anything, so I got to track it down. Oh, no, I put it in the Discord. That's easy. Bum, 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 bum. So what is it? His, it's his top 10 uh, Days of Play games, Days of Play PSVR games? So he doesn't specify that it's his top 10, but he says these are 10 recommendations for games that you should try out during Days of Play. Shoes I mean, one of them 10. is Iron Man demo, so it's not all like stuff that's, you know, even would be in a top 10. But here's what he says. Astrobot Rescue Mission, Firewall Zero Hour, uh, Marvel Iron Man VR. Next one, Super Hypercube. Imagine that. He says it's like the new Tetris. Um, Moss. Keep talking and nobody explodes. Pixel Rip 1989. Tilt Rush. And then, like we said, Last Labyrinth and Neko Atsume VR. So some weird choices in there by Shuhei, but some decent ones too. I mean, Firewall, Astrobot, it's got a lot of the heavy hitters. Yeah, I mean, Keep Talking um, and, uh, and Super Hypercube are awesome games. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, I guess if they're on sale for you know deep enough, it's like they're hard not to recommend. Some of the things he says about those are, though, like he says, uh, Super Hypercube, he says, just next generation Tetris, similar to Beat Saber, you can accurately grasp the distance between the approaching wall and the cube in VR space. And I feel like comparing this in any way to Beat Saber is totally bonkers and doesn't make any sense to me. He's like, so because um, he's what he's saying is because it's in VR, you can see depth. <laughs> pretty much. But, but yeah. had to but had um, to use the word Beat Saber in there somehow. Okay, so here's what he says. Um, the latest work for Last Labyrinth, uh, the latest work by Hironori Takahashi, sorry, uh, where you can enjoy the presence and communications of girls unique to VR. Ooh. It's got a little bit of a creepy tinge to it, yeah, I think. It's, it's um, and then that. Neko Atsume, which is always a good idea, where he's like, uh, taking cats is a pain in the ass, taking care of them, so uh, why don't you just buy this game? Wait, taking care of cats is a pain in the ass? That's what Shuhei says. Oh no, why didn't anybody tell me? I'm about to adopt one, <laughs> like three weeks out. I don't yeah. know, man. You All right, guys. Neko Atsume. You're Bye. back? All right. I'm so back. Talking about Shuhei. I, I know. I was. I was seeing. I saw that list. It was pretty cool. By the way, real What's quick up? update on Tornado. I was watching Tornado play today. She's getting bigger, and she's like pouncing on things, and she's jumping on her sisters, and it's like she's starting to get like as a kitten, she was always rambunctious, right? But like now she's getting like I can just picture 
she's going to be jumping off the kitty condo onto my face to wake me up. Like I'm just picturing these things as I'm watching her on the live streams. I'm my whole life is about to get turned upside down. Just like tree guy. Hit it, Dave. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Let's go. That comes to us from Atmos VR 77 with a $20 donation saying, this is why I'm here. Sony certification doesn't take content value into account. Doesn't take content value content value into account. Like is it it's worth the money. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And just just whether it works or not really is all they're curious mm -hmm. about. Thanks for yes. what you do guys. Thank you, Atmos, for the support. We love you. We love all of you guys. All right. So that is it for the news. However, guys, there is a huge sale on PSN right now. The days of plays sale. It has begun. Um yeah. Days of plays started yesterday and man, there are some wicked good games on sale right now that you guys do not want to miss out on uh you better get your wallets ready we're going to run through each and every game on the sale oh boy. tell us our tell you our opinions on it um you guys ready you ready strap is in. this uh just to clarify this is north america only right um uh, i know this, uh, this, this, this is the north american everywhere. one if you're in another region no i mean it's every the sale the days of play is going on everywhere yeah, but just so different games. if if you're if you have a game on sale in another region just ask us we'll tell you what we think about it be be happy to answer that um so as we do this guys every single time uh dave and i uh fight every single time we're gonna try not to i don't think we'll um, fight about i'm gonna fight both we, we, not so much we are not fighting on this one this is gonna be pretty straightforward yeah um, I wish I almost wish there was something more controversial here, but these are way too easy. So first game is GT Sport Spec 2 for $20.09. Guys, have I told you that I love Gran Turismo Sport so much? I think maybe once or twice, yeah. So the actual game is just like $20, and I'm pretty sure I got the game, the update for free, I think. Um, I don't know if the Spec 2 has any VR content. That being said, Gran Turismo Sport is absolutely amazing in, in VR. I love it to death. If you want to just drive around on dirt courses, F, uh, like, you know, indie tracks, streets, um, all different types of cars, go-karts, go look at my last stream of the latest update that they added. Um, I don't know if I ever talked about actually i never got a chance to talk about it on the games cast because it wasn't out yet and it came out the next day and man it is just so much fun if you have a racing wheel it is like one of the most immersive and fun things ever you guys man you guys really letting me down here i need you guys to jump back in and play some gran turismo sport at some point yeah playstation 5 you yeah. got it man i'll have to buy <laughs> it again because i don't have it so buy it again it's worth it um TY Queen says, I didn't like GT Sport with a DualShock 4. Couldn't control my car. Couldn't control your car? Because it's like a simulation and it's not like an arcade racer? Like well, this is the thing. Control? Again, awesome. there are different options and you can make it like uh, an arcade racer with the options. There's some like, you know, it'll automatically slow down around a corner. You know, that's the big difference. That's a big difference between arcade racers and sim racers not in my but, book man every every arcade racer i've played it does not slow you down it's ridge racer you fucking fly around the corner at full speed and you slide the whole way man power sliding or drifting as they call it now because things have gotten cooler since i was young yeah yeah um burnout fucking taking those corners at full speed motherfucker right <laughs> that this, this one you do have to yeah you do you do have to like you know take your time around corners and stuff like that but man i love the physics but I don't know. Um, you know, this one is a yes for me. Um, most of these games are going to be a yes for me. But this one is a yes for me because I love GT Sport. Um, I, I don't, know, I don't have an opinion on this. this. This one, I'm like right in the middle on it. Like, you know, like people can make their own decision. But they, they know that this isn't a full... You don't get to play just like straight through the campaign. Uh, and you don't get to do full multiplayer. Uh, so there are setbacks. But, you know. It, I, I'm going to wait for PlayStation 5 to really dive into this one again. Which is fair. Um, Great Tantrum, JB, what's up, dude? Says, I play GT Sport with DualShock 4 just fine, as I do not own any wheel system. Um, I do think, I think using a wheel makes it a must-have if you have a wheel. Um, 
dual shock four i still think it plays fine usually when i play something with a peripheral like that and then i go back to dual shock i'm like oh how did i ever use a dual shock in the first place i actually went back with the dual shock and was like this isn't bad so um you know if you're not into sim racers maybe it's not your thing understandable but you know i i think uh if you like racers if you really you're craving a racer in vr this dirt rally and wipeout are pretty much the big three that you have to have i do like touring carts as well and no really state on dash dash racing yet either yep um they've got a new so, pr person taking a uh, proof spot so uh so the, the person i was talking to over there all the time no longer works there and so uh once i get their new pr person set and in place uh i will have a new person to talk to um i love this game no i understand that can be for everybody but i'd love for you guys to jump back in at some point some point I want that why we love i want a why we love gran turismo sport brian okay well jeremy should start playing it now because it's going to take him like a year to get through everything he needs <laughs> to have a conversation about that all right uh what's next, next? game is skyrim vr for 2099 <sighs> kind of crazy kind of crazy i mean skyrim is I mean, it's such an essential game. We've we've talked about it a lot. It, it keeps. I feel like it went down on our top twenty list quite a bit. Like it, it would fall down over time, and then recently, I feel like we've been pushing it back up um, yeah. to, to the detriment of Borderlands. Uh, and it's, it's just such a good game, and there's so much content. And really, like you know, don't listen to anyone out there that's like, "Oh, this game's ugly," or "This game isn't fun," or "This crap." You know. It's, I, I always lose my mind when I see negative comments about this game because it's a full... I, I would agree with that at launch. I would agree with that at launch, but I've yeah, said sure. before, once they patched it, especially if you have a pro, mm -hmm. it looks phenomenal. Like beautiful. It looks wonderful. Uh, yeah. It's like a really great looking game. And if you can... Then the move controllers take some time to get used to, not for AJ because he's a fucking you know, ninja, but, like, uh, but for the rest of us humans... Uh, it takes a little time to get used to all the fucking buttons and stuff in the layout. The, the movement's fine, but man, getting used to where every single menu is and, and, and doing that second nature, it takes a little time. It's, but it works great with the DualShock 4 or the move controls. Just take, just take some time, get used to it. And this is absolutely one of the best games on PlayStation VR. Uh, I mean, hands down, so much content. Absolutely. absolutely. I recently played through it again. I beat it on, ps3 played through it again this is the definitive this is the ultimate version um and is just absolutely absolutely amazing you uh joe grover always likes me to mention how you can ride dra dragons in this yes you can ride dragons in vr guys ride dragons just let that sink in for a second i just last time i played i turned into a vampire i finally did it and i turned into this freaking freakish vampire and i've got like these like vampire hands and i'm like oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm like um, you can like dash and like have like you can turn into bats and like dash forward and stuff, um, drink people's blood, um, turn other people. It, it was really cool, man. There's so many different style adventures. Um, also, an underrated stealth game. Uh, Skyrim, if you have a stealth loadout, it is actually pretty underrated as a stealth experience as well. You got cold yogurt says it's blurry on my pro. I, you I got cold I don't have that yogurt? experience. I feel like it looks great on my pro. Interesting. Definitely not blurry. Uh, maybe the beginning. Maybe the beginning's a little blurry, but like, give it a minute and it'll, it'll uh, definitely change. Um, welcome back, Darth Vader. Hopefully, you caught the uh, Star Wars game discussion we had earlier. Um, Joe Grover, the effing game cat with the two dollar donations, says AJ rides dragons, y'all. Yes, I do. Hell yeah. Um, you get yeah, you get a shout that eventually lets you just like just ride dragons and shit, and it's so freaking good. Move support, man. You got to play this game with move support. Next, we have Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown for $19.79. Oh, wait. Uh, Skyrim is a yes for me. Oh, yeah. Dave? Yeah. Brian? Yo, absolute yes. That is three yeses. We got a thumbs the, up. The first Dave. one, Take it. Uh, GT Sport was a yes for me. Sound like a no from you two. Uh, I mean, I, it's kind of a no for me, um, but like yeah. there, there are people out there who just want a sim racer, and, and so they can decide for themselves. You know, there, there's going to be a selection of people out there that are looking for exactly what it offers. Um, but yeah, no, it's a no. It's a no I think for me it's personally. important. I think it's important that we all three say yes or no at the end from each of these. Yes, so that people can see if we agree on all of them or if yeah. somebody disagrees. One hundred percent agree, and that way we can get into fights. Yes. 
Uh, Ace Combat 7, obviously only three VR missions, but they are replayable as hell. It is very difficult um, to learn uh, for some of them. Uh, if you have a HOTUS controller, it is one of the most immersive and amazing experiences. Guys, this is to my day, to this day, still my favorite PlayStation VR experience. It's really goddamn cool. And, um, you know, even though it's just three levels, like you said, it's replayable and you can unlock stuff. There's planes and weapons to unlock that you don't just have when you start it up. Um, so there is definitely, I mean, I put a decent amount of time into this, way more than I'd put into a lot of other $20 games. Because um, like you said, it's not that easy. There's one difficulty mode that only unlocks after you beat everything on hard, which in itself is a challenge. You and, do you unlock know, different yeah. planes and then like missile loadouts. That's what I was just saying, yeah. Um, so it's not just, you know, difficulty levels. You get new loot and stuff too, different planes to try out. Um, and apparently ace mode is fucking hard as balls. It so is. I think there's a lot of value there for 20 bucks. And it's just such a strong experience. Like yeah. you will have a huge smile on your face, especially if you have a HOTUS. Yeah, unlike uh, Gran Turismo, I feel like the limited PSVR support on this uh, is just, it's still, it's still a must have because of what it offers is so, so good. Um, it's three missions, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's such an incredible feeling. Um, and for for twenty bucks, this is finally where I'm I'm finally at a price where I can be like, yeah, you know, three missions that are really replayable. Um, it's you owe it to yourself uh, to pick this thing up and experience uh, this. And I know you can spend like what ten hours or so with just these three missions. I, I spent about eight hours total. Um, Andrew C says, yeah, for those who have played the first three, does this game's combat feel like those at all? I'd say it feels. I'd say the VR missions feel a lot like Ace Combat Three, definitely. Damn. There's there's you just take out planes and then you take out um, ground things and it was like it was a little bit more on the simple side but um, I think like yeah. I ask this question every single time we bring up base combat was four electrosphere because uh, we do because we four do is the one I remember the best and that, and I think that was the first PlayStation two one and that and that feels a lot like this to me. No, three was electrosphere. God damn, I'm so bad at this. Yeah, that actually makes more sense to me. Don't you have it on the wall behind you somewhere? Yeah, but then I have to go look. There's like I have to like sort through a, a thousand games back there. I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to go through White Man Can't Jump. Four I'd have to go through Qbert. I have to. I mean, four so was Shattered Skies. Oh, Shattered Skies, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And then five was was five the Ace Combat X. The Unsung War. Yes. Was that five or X? Five. There was also the Belkin War. For PlayStation PSP? 2. God damn. There's no, a Ace Combat X was Skies of Deception. There's too many Ace Combat games. It's official. Yeah. How yeah. do you get to X before you get to 8? Oh. Well, the this is Ace like Combat that. 7, so. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying they haven't even got to 8 yet. How do they hate the X? That's like, yeah, no, not a 10, yeah. just an X. I, I've honestly never heard of X. Dracula X. I think it might be P like Final Fantasy X. It might be on PSP. It might have been as like a side mission. That's why they didn't want to number it. Probably so. Yeah. Probably. PSP was fucking dope. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm giving this a thumbs up, even though it's very limited. Keep in mind, you know what you're getting, but still what you're getting is awesome. So thumbs up not here. Not as limited as people think it is, I think. I sure. think you'll be surprised by how much is in there. Have fun. Big fat frog. Are you guys saying it's better than good dog, bad dog? Yeah, I, I think we can probably say that. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, Just say. a little bit. And it's Thumb cheaper. It's so. also cheaper currently, so go for it. God, that's... Okay. Abysmal. Right. This is one of the best deals that I've seen so far on this sale. Astrobot Rescue Mission for nine ninety nine. Holy shit! Well, let's remind everybody this game came out at forty dollars, and then and then it only recently got dropped down to twenty dollars for a retail price, and now it's half of that. So it's literally a quarter of its launch price right now for ten dollars, and one and of the it's best. Still just as good as it was. So. If you don't have this yet, for some reason, today is the day. Tonight is the night. You got ten bucks on you. I know you got ten bucks on me. Yeah. Give me ten bucks. Give them ten bucks. Triple A game. This was my most anticipated game from 2017, 2018. No, 2018. This was my most anticipated PlayStation VR game. Uh, right after Moss came out. Moss was my original because I love my platformers. This, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I love platformers. And this is the next evolution of platformers that we got. Um, I've played so many, like Mario 3D World, I thought was actually kind of disappointing. Um, 
I know some people liked it, but I'm a huge fan of like, you know, I've beaten Super Mario World like probably four times, like including the star levels. Um, can, can we just go through every platformer and, and, and hear yeah, your thoughts on I wonder, them? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Jack and Dexter? My favorite, Jack and Dexter one, my favorite 3D platformer probably of all time. I actually didn't play a lot of Jack and Dexter and Ratchet and Clank, surprisingly. Uh, then your opinion is null and void. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I've played like every single other one. Um, I like those, though. I like those. They they were a little bit. I don't know. I wish I would have beaten them so, to really know what was in the rest of them. But the parts that I played, I thought they were a little it was it was granted. It was probably more towards the beginning. So it was like a little slow. Um, like it was more like run around. Like it, the gameplay was more like run around in third person and like shoot stuff or break stuff and like smash enemies. Like massive you know, I li- thons, but I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I I like platforming where it's like you run and jump and like constantly running and jumping, avoiding obstacles, stuff like that. It certainly gets there for sure. Yeah, I figured. I figured I was missing out. Yeah. Um, right, so can we say Astrobot is a thumbs up from everybody across? The Astrobot board? is a huge thumbs up. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, no question about it. This this is always uh, in the top two slots on our top twenty five lists. Top, yeah. Although, I'm guessing next time it's going to be dropped to a third place. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Anyway, so get it while it's um, box, then you'll appreciate. it. Absolutely Shins amazing game. Triple full A game, full length. Game. Ten ten hours, platinum trophy, um, challenges, lots of five different worlds. Awesome soundtrack, awesome, awesome metal, some metal songs in there. Great use of the only use of the uh, touchpad, the best use of the touchpad since that thing was created. Uh, next, we've got Blood and Truth for 1999. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm bringing up the trailer. You guys want to talk about Do you it? like Die Hard? Do you like James Bond movies like Casino Royale? You remember the beginning of Casino Royale where he's just getting the shit kicked out of him and he's like jumping through explosions and stuff. This is basically that experience in first person, but it's also a five hour game um, with some awesome, awesome sections. And uh, yeah, I so hate it. Th- I, another triple A game. I hate action movies. I really do. Like, I mean, I, I can't stand them. I guess I, bo- I get bored. I zone out. You know, people talk about, oh, you got to see this. It's like so much action. And I go, that you just sold me on not watching it. I'm not interested, right? Um, that's just not what I watch movies for. It's totally different when you're playing an action movie game because you are the fucking hero. And it feels so good. Everything in this game, shooting, climbing, customization. I mean, even even the conversations, the, the characters, facial models, and the voice acting, it's all so good. Um, yeah, no, I mean, this, this is an action movie game. And I've really, 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 uh, you know, it, it just works. It just really, really works in VR. Lots of love for um, Blood and Truth. Andrew C. Yeah. said it's the best best action movie I've ever played. I agree. Right. And I like action movies, and I like action movie video games. Um, Darth Vader, who just got his, I think, just got his PSVR recently. Mm-hmm. Um, that was like the bundle he got. Says he just beat it. Congrats, dude. And I'm glad you really loved it. Um, original price was $40. And it was worth every penny at $40 for me, even though it was... Even though it, when I first played it, before all the updates that added the stuff, it was kind of like a one and done, right? It was like you played it once, but the experience and the gameplay was so fun and the experience was so memorable that I was satisfied after those five hours that I was like, this is amazing. But you can actually eventually go back and play it again and just yeah. choose the the, act, the the shooting levels and stuff, and it's a lot of fun. Well, in, in well, the already- is uh, yeah, okay, so they've added DLC, a bunch of free DLC since it right. came out. So what you're getting now for less than the original price is more stuff than you would have got up front. And some of it supports the aim, which is kind of cool. Not a whole lot of it, but there, you know, people were asking like, oh, can we get aim support? And they said, hey, like in a limited way, yeah, if you want to use your aim in like a shooting range, we added that for you. Go ahead. Um, they added like a weird rhythm game shooting thing. There's yeah. like some quirky little stuff in there um, that they totally didn't have to give us for free. And they did. So um, it's just a great value all around. Like you said, replaying stuff to get all the stars so you can unlock better weapons like the the minigun and the grenade launcher and all that stuff. Um, if you want to grind this game, you know, you certainly can. Yeah. There's I mean, you wouldn't expect like 
hidden collectibles in a game like this because it seems just like a straightforward action movie. But you can go off the beaten path and look through drawers and stuff and find, you know, collectibles uh, to, to unlock that shit. And one of the things that they did update, uh, not just like, you know, not just challenges and stuff, but they also they patched in a hard mode and a new game plus mode. Uh, so it gives mm -hmm. you definitely a reason to go back and just pick up your yeah. old save game and play through all over again on a hard difficulty with all your shit, which is my favorite way to replay games. Um, you know, Resident Evil 7 did that in spades. Uh, so highly recommended. Definitely thumbs up. 20 bucks, right? Thumbs up, Dave. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. for me, I got to just remind people, this was my number three game on our last top 25 debate. This was number three for me. So this is an absolute two thumbs up. Yeah. Mine was like Amazing nine game. or something. I, it's like my, mine keeps falling down the list, but it doesn't mean I don't love it. We just keep getting but, better and better games. Blood and Truth is, an, is like I'm just another reason I love video games. Um, it's that good. All right. So next we have Borderlands 2 VR for nineteen ninety nine. Pretty good. It's got all the DLC now, so that's cool too. That price um, is insane. The lowest it's been is twenty five dollars. Okay. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. this is I the mean, lowest it's, it's been at twenty. I'm not surprised that it's twenty because, like, it is as cool as it is in VR. It's an old game. Yeah. You know, it's a repackaged version of an old game. Um, so kind of like you know how Skyrim is twenty bucks. It's a huge game, tons of stuff to do, but it's a. At this point, it should be like a twenty dollars game, probably. Yeah. Um, Just a reminder to people: this game has aim support now, and I think the aim support really changed how I felt about this game. For yeah, me. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's it, done really well. It, yeah, it was already good. Like, I mean, when the game came out and it had DualShock Four and move support, we're like, "Wow, this feels really good." You know, this feels really good with whatever controller. And people were like, "Well, what about aim support?" And it's like, I, and I kind of like, you know scoffed a little bit i was like really i mean like just it can't be happy with a game that yeah. doesn't really you know there's no reason for it to have aim support you know you get you get dual wielding and all this different shit and i was like why would this game have aim support it's so you got to fucking hand it to to gearbox because they yeah. listened and then they gave us like uh, they actually gave us a reason to play it with aim support and it works i think i think the list goes farpoint as the best aim supported game and then possibly this only by the way the aim feels the one-to-one -one, uh well you know. firewall but well no no but like, firewall doesn't yeah, fire. feel as good like as far uh -oh. as the, as far as the one-to-one -one movement of the aim goes there's something mm -hmm. about farpoint in this that just feels so good the one-to-one -one movement firewall says i just bought borderlands yesterday what can i look forward to lots of guns Billions. lots and lots of guns the thing about the thing about borderlands 2 it it has stretches where it's where it's a little like the pacing. I think the pacing is kind of up and down at times, but driving the vehicles is super fun. Um, and, you know, it, it's not really the it doesn't have the greatest exploration, but it does have cool like side quests and um, it's got tons of weapons and the lots of variety of enemies and environments, uh, which I think is really good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But, you know, they've also added the DLC and like, you know, some of the DLC, all 15, 16 packs of DLC for free have been added. And that's a lot of people I speak to. That's their favorite part is the DLC. So I beat the game not too long ago, actually, and love the final boss of it. Um, but really, I need to get into that deep grinding for loot uh, phase of it, because that seems to be what like everybody really loves. And I'm just not there yet, even though I've spent like 30 plus hours in it. Um, I'm just not there yet. I want to say it's Darwin's eyeball. I could be wrong. He says, uh, who, who always says that it's like his yes. favorite PSVR game. You got to play it on hard mode to really get the full extent of it. Um, yeah. I haven't played it on hard. Um, so maybe yeah. when we rate this sucker uh, or before our next top 25 list, needs to dive back deep and make sure it finds the, the right home on that list. I wonder if he's talking about the Vault Hunter Plus or whatever it's called. Um, Vault Hunter game. mode. Vault Hunter mode. That's the new game yeah. plus. That yeah. I didn't know if there was like a hard mode unless you beat it. Is there? Can you? I think I think you have to beat it. Yeah, you have to beat it and unlo unlock Vault Hunter mode. That's so yeah. So that's why I said it is a it is a little bit of a time sink, some grind. But I mean, I mean but it's like a twenty hour long campaign or something. Especially yeah. if you throw the DLC on there. So for twenty bucks, yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. No brainer. Real quick, let's uh, before we move on from. I think. If, if you have an aim, 
I'd say it's a no-brainer. Oh, yeah. Even if you, if you have an board, aim controller. Even with DualShock 4, this game kicks ass. It does. It does. But I still don't think I'd recommend it as much with, as without well, an aim. That's that's a personal thing because when the move right, support was there. Right. That is my personal thing. Um, yeah. No, I'm saying when the move support was there, I played with DualShock 4 exclusively. I didn't give a shit about the games or yeah. the moves. I played with like moves. Them. I played with. Actually, I like the moves. But yeah, I played with the moves. And then I, and yeah, then I switched I to the aim. I think aim's the best way to do it now. precision, nothing is better than head tracking. The oh, it's got that. Head. It's got the oh, pre- head track. It's, yeah. it's got the head tracking. Yeah, I do oh, like that. Yeah, it's like it's perfect. I was getting headshots like crazy, and then if you switch to the moves or the aim, you're subject to your own wobbly ass hands. You know, shooting all over here and stuff. Um, just head tracking is like a mouse and keyboard. It's so yeah. easy to use. So DualShock Four, you'll still have a great time with. I think if that's all you got, you know. Yeah, I know we didn't actually mention it. I think everyone knows at this point uh, that Borderlands VR does not have multi multiplayer. That is a big thing yeah. that's missing from the non VR version. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled that we got the all the DLC, and I'm thrilled that we got aim support stuff that we didn't really expect to get. But um, but yeah, we never got multiplayer, and I don't expect to. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I, I I know it's a deal breaker for some people, and I kind of understand that because when you run around in this game, it does feel like playing with friends would be unbelievable. Um, but you know, it's, I think it's still worth it for the price. So it gets a thumbs up for me. Definitely with aim support. Somebody, no! No! That's for K panic, the game cat and mouse with the three nine nine donation saying, okay, so worked all day. No clue. What the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Uh, you know, the usual shit. Thanks. K panic. Uh, welcome all to right. the show. Actually, so yeah, welcome everybody to just join us. Speaking of far point, far point is on sale for nine ninety nine good price That's this another is game that added a bunch of stuff after launch now they've got all these pvp modes online co-op a bunch of multiplayer stuff in there and then the campaign we've talked about how good the story is like one of the best written narratives i think in in psvr um and it's just it's a great aim game this is the game they designed the aim alongside you know so it, it just works really well yeah if you hate spiders you should really play this game yeah, it's yeah. a little intense if you don't like spiders. Yeah, because I mean, um, this is still one of my favorite games, um, if not my favorite game. I know it's it's kind of a toss up between Walking Dead now, but before Walking Dead, Farpoint was my favorite game, PSVR game. Wait, what about what about Moss? Uh, I like Moss, but Farpoint was more like eight hours, and then like you know the the. I got my dude Void Cat in the chat. Um, you know, this game has the story. It's got the story mode. Amazing story mode. Oh. What Lord about Jesus. what about Little Quill? Did you, forget, <laughs> did you forget about Little Quill? If 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 Moss was six to eight hours, it possibly could have been my favorite VR game. Hey Jay, why did you forget um, about me? You forgot about my tiny little mouse stick. <laughs> right, we've already been going for two and a half hours. Um oh. <laughs> but yeah. I uh yeah, Farpoint is like pretty much still my favorite PSVR game. I I, I have to th- kind of think about it between Saints and Sinners and Farpoint, but I'm still going to give it to Farpoint right now because of the story, how strong the story was. And I'm not usually like a story driven guy, but um, the story and the challenges. I'm I'm sorry, the the co op is just like absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's great. No, it's a great game all around. The co op co op modes. Uh, PvP modes. I mean, it's it's great, uh, and yeah, the story is wonderful. Can't can't go Nine, wrong. How much does it cost? Nine ninety nine. I mean, seriously, why why don't you own this game yet? You guys, Nightmare Creature is in the chat well, and no. asks. Well, first of all, I love his name or her yeah, name, and uh, says, "Can I use move instead of aim?" No, you can only use DualShock Four and uh, yeah, yeah. aim control aim in Farpoint. If you have an aim, it's it's a must have. The the people that made this game made the aim controller and it is so good. I love my favorite thing is switching the guns and you like whoosh, whoosh, you just flip the gun up and it changes your guns. Um but yeah, I did a stream on I did a stream on this recently too with Voidcat, um, where we did the the co op on chaos difficulty, and that's really like the peak of this game. Yeah. Is the story and then co op on chaos. So good. Ten dollars. This is ridiculous. Like of all the games we talked about so far, I mean, a lot of the games we talked about so far have been like twenty dollars or thirty, you know, whatever. Um, this and Astrobot. Like if you if you get twenty bucks to spend, make sure you get both of these. Ten bucks a yeah. pop. It's absolutely ridiculously priced. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, big thumbs up for me. One of my favorite games of all time. Definitely. Yes. All right. All right, next we've got – so this is an interesting one. This is Concrete Genie for eleven ninety nine. Now, obviously not the full game. I'm gonna. This is going to be an interesting one to hear what you guys have to say. Not the full game, but there is a VR experience, VR mode. And I was curious to see if you guys think – that the VR mode was worth eleven ninety nine. No, uh, I don't know. I think it's a really cool experience. There's not enough there probably for a price above ten dollars. If you're just interested in the VR part, if right. you want to play the flat screen game, this is a fucking awesome price. If right. you have any interest in the flat screen game, it's a full game. It's got a VR mode. The VR mode is um, pretty limited, but it's got this cool like three D painting area where you sort of just build the environment around you with brushes that like you know, create tulips off the ground or trees or, or rocks or, you know, rainbows or sunsets or stars in the sky or fireworks. You can do all this stuff and create your own little uh, 3D environment that's pretty, you know, cool to hang around in and pretty magical. And I think if nobody, if it's somebody who's never tried VR and they're not like a fan of games or whatever, or they don't know how to play games that much, um, and maybe tilt brush is like too intense, too many things to fuck around with, with the palette and stuff. This is super simple, and you can just easily, quickly put together like a cool 3D VR landscape. And then um, the flat wall painting segments aren't as good, but they're still kind of cool. You can put on animations and stuff, and you're like drawing on a cave wall, and it's like flickering, and there's creatures walking around that you can interact with and stuff. Um, so, I mean, I think it's a pretty cool experience uh, if you know that it's not much. And a lot of the stuff that you can paint with in that mode, you have to unlock in the flat game. So, like I said, if you want to play the flat game, it's going to be more worth your money. But, Brian, tell me why it's totally not worth it and you think it sucks. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think it sucks for sure. Um, but it just, it just the modes are definitely kind of feeling pretty tacked on. Well, you didn't um, get any sense of magic out of that 3D mode where you were creating your you guys, own. You guys nothing, were talking it up so hard when you were playing all. it that when I when I jumped in, I was like, this is what they're raving about? I was just like, okay. It's... I wasn't raving about it. I said it was pretty satisfying and felt kind of magical but yeah i, I don't know i, I, I think i watched both of you guys stream like before i got i played it and i i felt like maybe it got built up a little bit and i was like oh then maybe it looks really cool and i was like yeah, it looks all right it's all right fine see you know it didn't it didn't do anything for me um the game itself uh i've not played the 2d non-vr game no, but it exactly. looks so good that if you're yeah if you're interested at all in playing this game like i this this is an amazing price for it. Um, but yeah, if just for the PSVR stuff alone, I'm going to say no. But I mean, I don't think most people are like me. I think a lot of people are still playing flat screen games. And so this one seems like it's worth checking out for the sale price. Yeah. If you just want an experience, if you're willing to spend $10 on a cool experience and about no more than 50 minutes worth of content, um, then I, it, it is gorgeous. It's still, I still like the experience, but it's just hard because, you know, as if you include the flat stuff, it's like, yeah, this is definitely a good value, but it, just the VR alone, it's like hard to justify anything else. I really wish they kind of did it separately. Yeah. Um, well, I think we've described that well enough. People know if they want to play the flat screen or not. Yeah. It's kind of not a, a really easy thumbs up or thumbs down. Let's do a thumbs sideways on this one. Yeah. No, thumb sideways. Brian. Thumb sideways. Sideways, <laughs> Brian. I played good dog, bad dog all day. Don't start with me. So thank you for uh, thank you for sharing your input on that. Firewall Zero Hour is nine ninety nine. Yep, buy it. Yep, it's good. Uh -huh. You already know. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we need to dwell too hard on any of this stuff. Uh, this is one hundred percent awesome game. Everybody loves this. You know. And I think the people who don't love it didn't haven't spent enough time with it yet. It's too many people are saying, "Oh, you know, it. You have to wait five minutes to get into a game, and then you die immediately." Like, well, you you wouldn't die immediately if you were better. The other and, thing is, uh, people totally don't understand that you're just as helpful when you're dead. If you look at the cameras, you're almost more helpful than a living person in some cases. But I think people who don't understand that concept and are just expecting like a shooty shooty game are like, "Damn it, I died. I, now I'm just gonna sit here." And people will like leave if sometimes randoms will, like leave. It doesn't happen that often, but um, yeah. just know what you're getting yourself into. It's a slow tactical shooter. You got to you know 
be thoughtful about what you're doing. You can't just run around guns blazing and expect to win. And I think people might come into it thinking, oh, cool, I got a, like an AK. I'm just going to chick 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 yeah, and uh, that's very strategic. Shot it's like Rainbow Six Siege. They've taken yeah, a Rainbow. lot, a lot of stuff from Rainbow Six Siege, uh, and put it into this game. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's a obvious thumbs up. I think. Yeah, uh, big it's, thumbs up for me. It's intimidating, especially if you haven't played a game like this before. It's intimidating because you like, have to learn to communicate with your, you know, partners and stuff. Uh, but do it, and like it, it really, it's very rewarding once you do. So big yeah. thumbs and up. And people Absolutely. online are super. Um, accepting like if you haven't played they'll yeah. show you the ropes and stuff nobody's a dick yeah uh, so. play psvr has a much more friendly uh, user base than regular games Sirens on um hand. it does take you know it does force you to take some to talk with your team and use strategy and yeah stuff um, um if, you're, if you're not a social person and that sounds bad to you just be aware that you might get some pushback from other people because the game tells you in every loading screen it's designed in a way where you have to communicate or else you're going to be putting your teammates and yourself at a disadvantage. Right. So it's yeah. really, um, you got to, I know you got a microphone on there. This is what I say <laughs> to people. Got it. I'm like, yeah. I know you got a microphone on there. Just talk. Just talk. Why don't you talk? And then if they don't talk after two rounds, I just quit the lobby because I'm like, we can't help each other. So I'm wasting my time here. I have so played every once in a while. To, you do you find a team that you don't have to talk to and it's nice, but yeah, it's like, you never know. I have to talk to. I've, I've gotten some teams where I've been able to steamroll the other team and not have, uh, not have to talk to each other. Like that's again, how I kind of wish. Again, you're well, I feel ninja, like the idea of not to have say. to talk to each other <laughs> is kind of antithetical to the cult concept of firewall. Yeah. I feel like if you don't have to talk to your teammates, that means you don't want to talk to your teammates, which means you got bad teammates. <laughs> Speaking of bad All teammates, right. I think we need to talk about the next game on the list. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Bravo talk. team yeah, I'm gonna for nine ninety nine. Oh, by the way, uh, Firewall was a thumbs up from Th- all of us. Thumbs yeah. up. Big thumbs um, up from all of us. Big thumbs up. Three, over 300 hours. Three hundred, Actually, almost 400 hours now. Dun, so dun, dun. That's how you become a ninja. Um, yes. Uh Bravo team for nine ninety nine. I no no. I, you know, I, can we not waste time on this? I just I don't like anything about Bravo team. <laughs> it's it's not fun. It's like if games are supposed to be fun, and, the, and Bravo team found a way to strip out all the fun from the game, and and turned it into just a big giant shooting gallery. It's not fun. Don't compare this to Time Crisis because it's doing nope. Time Crisis a disservice. There's no bosses. There's no vehicles. There's nothing. No movement in this game. Not fun. No, no, even even with all no the improvements, they've, they've also they have actually also added move support to this, which I was which was surprising. Cares, Let's, can right. we move on? Um, hold on, I got I got a question for you guys because I got into a fight. I got right. into a fight on, with somebody on Reddit about this, and they were like, you know, somebody was like, "How is Bravo Team?" I was like, "No," and I said, "Get," I said, "Get like Mortal Blitz or Crisis Brigade instead," and somebody goes. Mortal Blitz is not better than Bravo Team. I want to. What, what do you guys think? I I know. You already know the answer to this. It's more I think fun. Our wheels here. It's better. It's more fun. Right. So Bravo you guys Team agree with fun. me that Bra- that Mortal Blitz is better than Bravo Team? Yeah. It, it, Bravo Team is more polished. But it's a, that's why it's I love you guys. Player. Right. There's a lot. There's a lot of ways to say better than. Right. But but when when you're talking about a game like this, all I care about is if, is it fun or is it not? And that's why yeah. Crisis Brigade is a better game than this, even though it looks like PlayStation one graphics. It's yeah. more fun, infinitely more fun. And it actually has a personality. Mortal Blitz that, has Reddit. some personality. <laughs> uh, Rappo team is just like the most faceless military cop. I don't know what you're sp- just like. Everything's gray. gray. <laughs> it's just really lame. I'm no, like bad, bad. no, right. Right. Nice. no. Right. Bravo team's big fat no. Probably the only no on this list. Um, Doom VFR for fourteen ninety nine. Man, this game sure likes to go on sale for fourteen ninety nine a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a good price. Yeah, what's what's normal price? Is uh thirty bucks? I think so. Yeah, it released at thirty. Sounds right. Sure. Yeah. Or maybe forty. I can't remember. I think I think thirty. 40. Thirty sounds right. Yeah, thirty. Yeah, uh, nice, nice and easy. This I, I love this game. Uh, and, and I'm one of the few people that actually really enjoys the move support in this game, all the teleportation, and, uh, and, and just it adds a whole strategic level that as fun as dual shock and aim support are, it's a wildly different game with move controllers. And if you're up to the challenge of not having click turning and you want to spin 180 degrees in your living room or in your fucking man cave or wherever the fuck you play video games, if that's, if that's something you're willing to do and then use the 180 flip button and, and, and learn how to use that effectively... 
I mean, then you then you'll enjoy this game in every possible way, and, and actually enjoy the game the way it was designed. Fourteen ninety nine. Yes, even if you don't use the move controllers, still a yes. Even if you don't, what are you telling to be? I should have been listening the last couple seconds. What? Yeah, you should even have been. If you move don't on. Use the, <laughs> even if you don't use the move controllers, do not use the move controllers when you play Doom VFR. Use either the DualShock, which is my recommendation, DualShock with Ultraviolence. You have to play it on Ultraviolence. I say this in the top 25 list. DualShock, Ultraviolence, you will enjoy the shit out of Doom. Some people like the aim as well. Um, I'm not a big fan of the aim. But some people like the aim. But because everybody has a dual shock and everybody can play it on ultra violence, it's a big fat yes for me. Yep, it's a big yes. Doom VFR is incredible. I love yeah. it. Not incredible, finally, but it's finally great. made it. Feedback. It's, it's not as good. I think I saw. Was it Nike Alexandria? No, it may have been. It might have been Unicorn Girl Girl. Um, somebody said that it's not as good as like. 2016 yes it's not as good as doom 2016 it's like a smaller vr version of that but it still it still has tons of action tons of polish the graphics are beautiful and it's in vr and, and it, it has doom this great vr not in vr yeah it is uh it is pretty awesome man. yeah um that's thumbs up but it, all yeah. around everybody loves it let's move big on. thumbs up I'm all right uh next is everybody's golf vr for 14.99 interesting is it yeah? Is it interesting? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's take care of all of the complaints first. There's no multiplayer. There's only three courses. There's what other complaints do we have? Is that it? You can't uh, turn no, off the no AI. Can't turn off the caddies. The caddies are annoying. Oh yeah, caddies going on dates. With no no tournament mode that you would usually find in like a yeah uh, in a golfing game. With all that out of the way, I still think it's the best golfing experience I've ever had in any video game ever. And I've been playing everybody's golf games since PlayStation One. Hot Shots Golf, same team. Um, that's what it was called in Japan, everybody's golf. Uh, so just to clarify that. Uh, dude, the move support is fantastic. I was like, there's no yeah. way they're going to nail the precision needed. But I was wrong. Like, you can, I, I feel like I've got a better golf game. Like, if I could step out onto the links now, I feel like I've got a better golf game because of my, my experience in VR golf. I know it's not true, but still, it feels no, like it. No, it is actually kind of true because I actually played some, I went to a, sh uh, a shooting range. Um, and, and you were actually, killing golfers? What were you doing? I don't understand. How this <laughs> <really late>. <laughs> no, I, I actually do think being good at golf or knowing some standard golf tips it actually helps you in everybody's golf. The tracking, I yes, I have, I have the same. I have the same complaints as everyone. No multiplayer. No, no tournament mode. The caddies are fucking awful. Um, luckily, you can skip them at some point though. But the game is so relaxing, so beautiful. Um, and just the gameplay itself is so much fun and really, really good. This is a big fat yes for me. Yeah, and I just want to say real quick, the stages are kind of limited. There's only three stages, but um, they're right. beautiful, and they're really, like you said, relaxing and peaceful, and like, I don't know, sometimes weather effects roll through, and you hear like a thunderstorm off in the distance. It starts raining, or like wind, wind blows the leaves in front of you, and they sort of wisp away and it's it's all very nice you know um when that stuff happens you know standing on the beach watching a thunderstorm come in while you're playing golf um you know who who wouldn't love that that's awesome and uh then there's dinosaurs in it too we didn't talk about the dinosaurs <laughs> there are the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah but yeah that's a uh, huge thumbs up for me i think 15 bucks is a absolutely good price for this for sure um, it's basic as hell but it's it's so good for what it is what's there yeah so yeah. good and there's um, sort of like you don't just get everything from the start. It's basic, but you do have to unlock stuff and go through and play, you know, to, to get everything. So that it does have kind of a built in progression and right. play loop there. Something to work towards. It's also exactly. got a platinum trophy. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So yes from you guys as well? One hundred percent. Absolutely, especially yeah. for this price. I mean, I can see someone being like, eh, I don't know, at full price, but for this price. Fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, you get your money's it. worth out of it for sure. Yeah. Absolutely kills it. Um, Ty Queen asks, "How many holes?" So each you, level, you always you, call him. You can do a Queen. Is it? You call him like the Thank You Queen, or I think his name's Ty. Ty Queen. Maybe like it's Tyler. Ty Queen. I don't know. Or, or can, um, can can you let us? Isn't know? it? Is it? It's it's Thank three you. holes and nine holes, and then you can reverse it, right? Yeah, you can. Well, isn't there three nine eighteen? I feel like yeah, there's one. Oh, 18, 18, right, right. There's eighteen right. on all of them. Yeah, duh. 
Yeah, the three, three, nine, and eighteen. Numbers, right. The three is just randomly picked. From- three is randomly picked. Yes. Yeah. And then nine, uh, eighteen, you can start from the back of the or the beginning or the end of it. Right, front nine, and back nine, um, and yeah. it's yeah, and and you kind of have to go through and and play th- you know the three hole versions a few times to unlock different things. So it it kind of it kind of makes you grind a little bit, but it didn't feel like grinding because I wanted to go out there and I wanted to I wanted to play the game. Yeah, yeah, it's so much fun. It's it's great to revisit too. If you haven't played in a while, if you haven't played this game in a while, I recommend. You go back and I feel like uh, after eight dinner, I kind of want to just. It says it AJ all. likes to say everything wrong. What did I do? What did I do? What happened? What What's I going on? Wait, wait, wait. Get the ball in the hall. Um, oh, uh, K Panic with the the game. Wait, I'm sorry. K Panic the game cat and mouse with the two dollar donation. Says AJ ain't human. Everything on max hard mode. I, li- I like playing. Uh, I like playing games on hard mode. Not every game, um, but you know. Grow up on games like Ninja Gaiden. God Jesus damn it, AJ! Christ. Do you always have that next? Do you sleep <laughs> I, with do. Your pillow? <laughs> I do, Thanks. and I hope that Ninja Gaiden Fairy comes at night and brings oh, me a okay. sequel. Brings you a ninja. Uh, actually, there was a trilogy. Um, there was three of them, and then there was a you know PS3 version. Um, oh, that one was pretty cool, right? I think that's the one. It I'm was Sigma, out. Sigma, What's... and then uh, Sigma Plus, and then there was one for Xbox. What I think that other game that Shinobi. Has ninja title well the shinobi playstation one was fucking awesome too um did you guys play that one which which one shinobi for shinobi for the playstation playstation <laughs> 2 ps2 or something yeah, yeah PS2. definitely that was pretty cool um anyways we don't have to talk about that I feel like so <laughs> yeah one game left but i think everyone said thumbs up for everybody's golf definitely uh, Ninja hardcore thumbs up um what's our last one aj bring us home <laughs> last one is super hot Nice. Super hot. Super. Yeah. Uh, what's the price on this? Twelve fifty. What? Twelve forty nine. There we go. Twelve. Goddamn. So, yeah. Half price. Ridiculous. This game is. This game holds up. I played it recently, uh, and I was kind of expecting it not to hold up, just because I was like, oh, it's super simplistic. But no, it's it's. There's so much more going on with this game it just feels yeah. so good to play and but, it's, it's kind of like a weirdly timeless like if you just got a vr now you wouldn't play this and be like this feels like an old dated <laughs> vr game right it's such like a, a strong like unique concept with like a real clear sense of identity and art design and stuff that it just sort of like sticks around and it's always good you know what i mean 100 percent yeah 110 percent. this is a steal i this game was 25 dollars originally um this price it's absolutely i paid full price for it of course um i i think it was worth the price um but this is like everybody should have it at this price this is like there isn't one person that shouldn't have this game when it's 1250 yeah right. unless you have like mobility issues because you gotta like bend all over the fucking place in this, this is game. true you can't sit in a chair good and observation play it. also it's Thai, um Thai queen we've got it sorted out we can all sleep yeah. well tonight We've got that shit figured oh, out. Thank you. Nick makes a good point too. There's uh, after you beat the game, there's extra modes. They have these little floppy disks on the table that you can just floppy pop in disc. and play different. Yeah, it's so cool. You pop the floppy disk and <laughs> you put on the headset, and then it jacks you into the world or whatever. Andrew um, C says, "Pro tip: Play the John Wick soundtrack on Spotify while playing for playing this for extra immersion." That's a good idea. I love the John Wick soundtrack. It'd be kind of fun too to like um, since time only moves when you move. If you're listening to like a very like beat oriented thing to like do your own sort of choreography where it's like slowing down and speeding up based on the song and shit. Why, why do I watch. feel like Bjork would be perfect for this? I don't know why. Bjork? Yeah. Just thinking, I don't know why it just came to mind. Bjork seems perfect for this fucking surreal kind of game. Holy crap, you guys. Plastic Heart. Plastic Heart from the John Wick 2 soundtrack. Excellent song. Great one. I want that to be like some uh, Pistol Whip DLC. But for now, I'll just play it during uh, Super Hot. Uh, Lifnock said we missed Tekken, RE7, and NBA 2K. Uh, Tekken, no. RE7, no. Yeah. off. Definitely, yeah, yes. Yeah. And NBA 2K, yeah. no. Good. We took care of that. Yeah. Thanks, Lifnox. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. I know that we're all a little bit tired. Um, it's been going on a little bit long. Uh, it's also Fuck been- that. I'm ready to go. Let's do it again. All right. I'm going to take a nap while you guys do that. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> Let's go. What was pile onto Dave's show. bed and you know, start we, every way we begin each and every week, Brian, with a little game of we're not going to do that to take it. 
Yeah. Anymore. All right, guys. Uh, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Uh, obviously, we, you know, we pimped the Discord nonstop because that's where all the fun happens. Uh, you want to sign up for that Firewall tournament that's happening later this month. Make sure you go to our Discord. Link is in the description. Sign up in the Firewall tournament. Oh, Jesus Christ, with the goddamn Buster Sword. It's always Don't with the Buster Sword. Off. No, do it. Cut your, cut your toe off, man. Like, learn to rest in the hard way. The dog. Um, so sign up for the Firewall Tournament over there. Uh, to $80 to the winning team, $20 each player with a PSN gift card. Uh, also, we just started to, We just started today. There's a, actually a weight loss challenge happening over on the Discord as well. Oh, if God. you're like me and you've gained a ton of weight over COVID, and also way before COVID with lots of pizza, um, <laughs> then, like, you know, there's, there's a few of us that want to take some weight off. There's a weight loss challenge. We're going to, like, keep each other on task for that. Starting every Friday, we're going to be posting our uh, scale weights uh, photographs in there. So if you need some motivation, well, we've got some motivation for you. I want to see how long AJ can hold all this shit up without getting, like, a cramp. Um... <laughs> But that's, that's kind of it, guys. We want to thank everybody who hung out tonight. Thank you to everybody who subscribed. Thank you to everybody who donated. Thank you to everybody who commented. Thank you to everybody who gives us money on Patreon. Thank you to everyone who just sat back and enjoyed the show and didn't say a goddamn word. Because as you know, I was just like you before they made me talk on this channel. You guys got anything? That works. Uh, thank you, Cats. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, AJ. My name's Brian. This was PSVR Gamescast, and we're out. Did All anyone right. ask, real quick, did anyone ask why I had a mug on the floor behind me the whole time? Now people are going to rewind and see why they didn't notice it the whole time. Why was there a mug on the floor behind you the whole time? I didn't because notice Because my AC's been leaking for like a week, and my landlord won't <laughs> send anybody, and I have to unload the mug like every Is it squeaking at all? No, that's my, that's my squeaking. chair squeaking. This is me. Oh. Uh. I, mean, I think I've we been were driving. You were you were driving somebody in the chat crazy. I'm so squeaking. sorry. They were, like, they were like, I swear to God, I hear squeaking. Nobody was, else hears that. And they were like, driving me out. insane. It was driving me insane. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. I, I was trying to not move my arm, and then it just happened all the time. Got me just being the cat game, Steve Irie. You got cold yogurt, big fat frog, 1909, or seek the game cat, Andrew C. Hard to get Nick Mulo, the game cat, Joe Grover, the effort game cat, mother effer. Meow meow, the game cat, the sword. Uh, Nike Alexandria, the game cat. Johnny No Pockets, aka the who that game cat. Nick Knox, 88, Kramer 3K, SB, Toodle Pit, to you can see, man. Uh, War and Gore, the gory. Game cat, Duran Fan VR, the Game Cat, I, my my uh, personal advisor, Darth Vader. Thank you, Lord Vader, for joining us today, and gracing us with your presence. Perfected insanity, K Pack, the Game, K Panic, the Game Cat and Mouse, uh, Nightmare Creature. Fucking love that game. Bit Jello Boy Thirty. Uh, thank you for dropping in. Sinner Six Six Nine, the Unholy Game Cat. Finally, Elbert, Ty Queen. David dash David blow six one seven says three holes lol not as funny as I can read it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nihilus Ryan the game feline sunshine happy fun times Jen Eric silent oh evil nine 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 love you guys so much Black Lives Matter let's fucking go we love you all yeah me out everyone. <laughs>